Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for joining me. Now, this is a bit of a strange video. You might have noticed in the description or in the title uh, that this is a tabletop simulator gameplay video. Now, I know what you're thinking, but don't go. I promise. This is going to be worth the wait. You see, my Discord community and myself have been getting more and more interested in Mythic Games' new title, Hell the Last Saga, which is down to, I believe, its last 48 hours on Kickstarter. Uh, it is a game that fits directly into my style of games when it comes to the gameplay, the dungeon crawl mechanics, the unfolding narrative and story, the Viking theme mixed with this dark sort of mystical uh, fantasy elements. And so we've been looking for a good opportunity to play it. However, the only copies currently available for Hell are on Tabletop Simulator. And I did just post a video extolling the virtues of our Discord community and the Tabletop Simulator platform as a whole. So, we thought that might be a good opportunity to check it out. But I still have a quality, a standard, a thing that I expect from myself when it comes to publishing videos here on the main page. So, this is sort of a grand experiment. Now... Physical copies, physical media is what I specialize in, and it is what will exist here on the main channel uh, perpetually. However, in this one kind of unique case, and potentially if this is received well by the community, uh, in one-off cases down the road, we may bring some digital content here to Quackalope. That will be entirely your decision. You see, I had a theory about how to do tabletop simulator right how to film it in a way that allowed me to make it a little bit of a higher production than average. Instead of one standing camera or someone being active, uh, kind of playing the game and you're just sitting over their shoulders, instead I've done exactly what I do here in the studio, except I tried to do it on a digital screen. I filmed some B-roll, I acted as a camera person instead of actually playing the game. I got uh, a few members from my Patreon community who are interested in playing Hell over into our Discord, we all hung out with, uh, with Sam Healy from Mythic Games, uh, sat down, played through an entire campaign while I'm floating around, zooming in on cards, trying to give you, the audience, the best experience possible. And then tonight, I just got finished editing and crunching all of that down together, putting music behind it, just like I do with our gameplay videos. So instead of lag time, instead of silence, instead of rules, corrections, and checks, you will be as engaged as I could possibly make it. That was the goal. But I'd love to hear your feedback. If this whole tabletop simulator thing works for you, if this was a good experience, if you enjoyed watching it, if you made it to the end of the video, right? Or if you didn't, I'd love to hear why, right? This channel is built and designed around the community that we have. And I'm really excited about that and I'm really proud of that. And so your feedback will script kind of the next steps of what we do here. But this was a grand experiment. This was just a one-off. We wanted to check out Hell. It's down to, I believe, its last 48 hours on Kickstarter, and so we wanted to give it a swing. And I am actually really happy and really excited to show off this, this video to you. This was a fun gameplay. Uh, we, have, uh, we have the classic Jan Begas doing, doing his very best to help bring us to victory. So, I'm excited you're here. Now, if you're coming from the Mythic Games Kickstarter, uh, thank you for being here. Super excited to have you. Please make sure before you determine everything about who we are off of this video alone, check out some of our other content, swing through a little bit, take a look at what we do. We produce aggressively high quality video content in the board game industry. So gameplay reviews, unboxings, how to plays, a whole plethora of things. And so we'd love for you to, uh, to take a closer look. And if you like what you see or you like this video or you just want to kind of help out a, a brand new board game channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment uh, letting us know your thoughts. Are you excited? Are you a backer? Did you discover us through Mythic or are you discovering hell through us? Whatever the case, thank you for being here. And I guess let's get started with this. I'm excited to see how this turns out. Mm -hmm. uh, you Same and I both. Here. And on that <laughs> note, I think we're getting started. I think that was exactly how we're getting started. This is a test run of Quackalope on TTS, which is not something that we normally do. If you are joining us, uh, thank you for being here. I'm joined today. Oh, I need to go ahead and make my, my screen big. So never mind. That's not how we're starting. Or it, it might still be. 
Thank you for joining us. I'm Jesse. I'm, I'm Quackalope. Uh, the gentleman you were seeing earlier is Sam Healy. He's going to be running us through a game of hell. Uh, I'm joined today with some rabble from the Patreon community. Uh, and this is a little bit of a different test run. We're trying to make a TTS video uh, as cinematic and accessible to watch as possible. So we're going to set you up with, with an overview of what hell is, uh, a little bit about the components and how the game flow uh, operates as a whole. Then Sam's going to set up the scenario or the event that we're going through here. And I'm going to be running the camera behind the scenes. So I'm actually not playing. So you might not hear from me as much, uh, except for little quips here and there. Instead, the uh, the Patreon community and, and a goose are going to be sitting down and seeing if they can survive. Which means if we get rules wrong or they lose, neither of it's my fault. That's that's really what I've done here. So Sam, I'm going to I will still and... blame you. Yeah, well, that's probably the case. Sam, I'm throwing it over to you. Uh, set up, <laughs> set up what this game is. Okay, so uh, Hell: The Last Saga takes place in the year 999. Uh, so basically, what uh, has happened is that a year ago from now, uh, King Hakan uh, was given some visions by the gods of a new, flourishing land that he could take his clan to and flourish and and spend the rest of his years here on earth uh in the lap of luxury and so he a year ago left with his expedition to go and set up a new settlement uh now we the rest of the peregrine clan are going to follow him and uh we are going to meet up with them and so that's where we are now the sea journey was harrowing and also very destructive we've lost the the vast majority of our clan uh, from the voyage and so now we happy few are landing on this foreign shore and uh we're we're very apprehensive i guess you could say about what's going on because first of all um we're not getting answers from our brethren as we blow our horns of arrival uh, and so we're we're trying to understand exactly what's going on, and we're trying to find the settlement, hook up with them, and begin to flourish with them. But we can't find anybody, so we have to figure out where they are, what happened to them, and and that's where this this game pretty much begins. So let's go ahead and focus in on uh, let's say we'll, we'll focus in on Drang, uh, because Drang is the the uh, he's probably the best. Uh, fighter that we have with us right now um, and we'll talk about uh, how setup goes a little bit but I want to explain the, the the kind of the core of the game as far as the players and how they interact with it uh, and that is the player dashboard so up at the top you'll see a list of stats uh, starting from left to right you have valiance which is your your strength in combat then you have defense which is how you how well you are at defending yourself from attacks then you have an agility uh, the number above it is simply a number of movement points that you'll be able to use to move from one hex to another. Uh, some hexes take more than uh, just one movement point, uh, but that's denoted on the board. We'll get to that in a little bit. And then the last three are survival, perception, and will. And these are more uh, skills that will be used for different tests that various game elements will, will have you make from time to time. For example, if you're hunting a quarry token, uh, trying to get some food, you'll you'll use a survival uh, test in order to do that. So what that simply means is that the number above your survival skill uh, means that you'll roll that many dice trying to achieve a certain number of successes. That's usually uh, denoted by the game element that's telling you to make that test. Your perception is what you're going to use to search either in your hex or in, a, in an adjacent hex. And again, the number above it is the number of dice that you're going to roll. And willpower is used to for the prayer action here in the beginning of, of the campaign. Uh, it could be used for other things as we as the campaign grows and flourishes. But uh, the numbers on top of your stats are simply, except for agility, they're how many dice you're going to roll when you're trying to perform that kind of action. Uh, below the skills, you have two or three rows of special abilities and a black box there. And you'll notice that one of the black boxes has a wound token on its uh, one face side. 
Uh, and then it has special abilities on the other uh, parts of that row. So basically, um, this is the, the black boxes are the hit point system of each character. So Drang here has the ability to take six hit points of damage before he's knocked down. So each of these black boxes can have up to two, if we flip over that token right there, it can have up to two. Now, as there's only one hit point on this row, for example, the Frenzy row, he can continue to use that Frenzy ability. But if any time during the course of the game he has to flip that over to a two side, that Frenzy ability is now negated. And he can't use it anymore until he heals himself or if a healer comes and he can flip it back to at least the one side. All right, so each of these rows can hold two hit points. Uh, so Drain can take up to six damage before he's knocked down. When a character's knocked down, we lose a morale. He can stand back up. He's not outright dead. Uh, but his next activation, he can heal one point of damage and then stand back up. But that may or may not be good, depending upon uh, if there are any hostiles that are still around that could possibly do some damage and knock him out again, because then we'd have to lose another morale. So that's something you got to keep uh, in, in, in mind. So each of these special abilities that are on these three rows are always active. They're always running. Some of them are simply used in different situations. So the loner ability, as long as he is alone, it doesn't matter what test he's trying to make, he can always add an additional die. Um, that's what the loner ability does. His rage says specifically that he can only use it once per activation. Uh, and it says that the hero can perform a melee attack as a free action but he suffers one wound after that attack. So he's really pumped up, he's really in, but he's not really um, being careful with this attack. He's not being uh, tactful. Uh, he's just kind of going at it. And then Frenzy down there, it says, when this hero eliminates a hostile, you may allegate any excess hits or successes to any other nearby hostiles. The word nearby always means things that are in the hex in which you are currently in. So keep that in mind for other special abilities that you'll see in the game as well. Over on the left-hand side of the player card, you'll see, first of all, a special ability that is uh, for Drang. It's invincible. So if he has suffered two wounds, then Drang will get a plus one defense. So his defense is only two right now. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's, he's half naked going into combat, so he doesn't have a whole lot of defense. But the more wounds he suffers, the better at defending himself he gets. Um, and then he has a 10 in Viking society. So that is his rank in Viking society, uh, which is pretty high. He's well respected. Uh, for example, the queen has a rank of 13. So he's just three mm -hmm. under the queen herself. So you kind of get the idea. Uh, that is going to be a unique statistic for each hero, uh, which will be important when we come to talk about the, the prey priority of the uh, hostiles AI later on. Next to that, he also has a, his faith alignment for the game. And Drang is a Norse uh, faith aligned character. There are also Christians and wilds characters that are in the game as well. Um, next to his uh, player sheet uh, is a experience card that he can use and he has uh, the whirlwind ability which if he uses two morale uh, he can take a free action which is what that hand with the zero means under it. And it says that Drang, Drang attacks in melee and inflicts this attack's result to each nearby hostile. So, now, again, he's a beast in, con in, in combat. On that note, I'm a little offended. This is a Quackalope video. There is flavor text at the top. I do expect you to not skip over that, Sam. Well, when we actually play the game, I will make sure to read it. And when I use uh, it. But it's right Absolutely. there. But I'm looking at it right now. Soon, okay. Jesse. All right, I'll read it. I'll read it. <laughs> Drang, one who remains always standing, never really understood the tactical maneuvers professed by Alvar. On the contrary, it is when he is surrounded by a myriad of enemies that he knows that he has an advantage and that soon a bloody head rain will fall at his feet. I think I did a great job at selecting my character. This is perfect for me. <laughs> yeah, and as far as I'm concerned, 
I've gotten everything I wanted out of the video, so at this point, I'm going to stop watching because all I wanted was for you to read me flavor text. That's been the whole goal this, this time. Okay. So we're done here then. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for joining <laughs> yeah, thank us. Thank you so much for your time, Sam. Jesse, did okay. you see how much flavor text is in the, is in the song setup? All right, let's continue. Uh, there is a whole, whole lot else. All right, so we'll move over to the clan board, which is over in this area here. And one and, thing I want to note really quick, just while everyone's looking at the components and, and everything like that, and as we're reading flavor text, all of this is yeah. still prototype, correct? Yes. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty fancied up prototype. It was a, mm -hmm. a, a, an hour or maybe two hours ago. Uh, it, it actually was, it looked a lot different. We actually updated this for your guys' uh, stream or your uh, recording. Today. So, thank you. Uh, it, it looks a little bit better than it did before. Uh, I mean, I did a, I did a live, a Facebook live a couple days ago, and uh, we've updated some stuff since then again. So, uh, it's pretty cool. Cool. But just so people who are watching know, some of the graphics still need to be updated. Some of the stuff translating, you know, still needs to be refined. So there is uh, elements here that when we have it physically in front of us, you can clearly see that it's a prototype. When it's on TTS. You have to kind of, I think, specify that this is still kind of a work in progress. So, so on the clan board here, we have up at the top, we have the the round marker. Basically, it says turn track, but it's really the round track. And so, this uh, cube will be used to track our our, our turns, uh, our rounds rather. Whenever we come to a place where the where there is a saga token here, we'll have to pause and and read that paragraph out of the saga book so that um, it can continue to uh, provide that storyline that we're looking mm -hmm. for. Uh, but that's only when we reach that, that uh, round. Uh, below that, you'll, you'll see the, the resource pool. Um, and this is a, kind of an interesting thing where the resource management is kind of streamlined. Whenever you gather more resources or something to that effect, whether it's wood or food or whatever it might be, it automatically gets put into this pool. Um, you don't have to physically bring it back to a certain location on the board or anything like that. Uh, it's just automatically um, is is available for anybody to use. Mm -hmm. uh, below that, you have the uh, scenario card, which uh, denotes, first of all, the three things that your uh, that are of import. Uh, in, in, in this scenario. So first of all, we're looking for our clan. So we need to find our clan. And and this track is kind of denoting how far along that process we are. We also want to heal Alvar. We'll find out in just a few moments when we when we read the, the flavor text to begin that Alvar has fallen sick, our leader for this expedition. And so we're, we're trying to um, heal him as we go through. And then, of course, we need to survive. All right, so as long as we survive, um, as long as we have morale, we are surviving. If we ever reach zero morale uh, in the expedition, we'll have to read paragraph 299. Um, uh, just so that you know, it's not good. Um, <laughs> I already want to know what 299 is. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Well, it's not good. So uh, we, we start here with all three of these right there. Uh, and that's the scenario card. Now... If you go down uh, at the bottom, you have this uh, spaces for six different cards. And these are where prayer cards can be added to the mix. Uh, over on the side of the clan board, you'll actually see the prayer cards that are over here. And uh, so basically when somebody prays, if you look at, uh, we'll just go to go ahead and use Glory to Tear as the example. Um, first of all, you'll see at the top of the card, it says uh, it has the Norse symbol here, which means that only a Norse character mm -hmm. can put this prayer card into play. Now, the way they do that is down at the bottom of the card, you'll see on the left-hand side that there is a willpower check, and you have to do, you have to get at least three successes or more in order to put that card into effect. But while you're making that attempt, you can use morale to get a specific success. So if somebody is saying, I'm going to pray, and then I'm gonna use three morale to put glory to tear into play, that would work. That means you wouldn't even have to make a roll at that point, you have three automatic successes. Or you can make the roll, and then, you know, without spending the morale, and then if you're not close to it, you can spend morale to, to uh, get some successes after that to add to it. Either way works, uh, and, if that happens, whenever this card is put into play, 
Norse characters, when they are performing an attack, a melee attack, can use this side of the die as uh, a success as well. So it, it basically makes melee attacks for Norse characters a little bit more potent. Um, and then you have the penance and the animal senses. Penance can only be prayed into existence with a Christian character, and then animal senses can only be prayed into by a wild character. Um, and so that's generally speaking how, how prayers work. But basically, uh, each, if you look back on the clan board, uh, each faith has the, the uh, space for two prayer cards at a time. Uh, so we only have three prayer cards that are available to us in this introductory scenario. So we won't reach our max, but if you do ever reach your max during the course of the campaign, you will have to basically pray for another card and then you'll have to switch it with one of the two that are already up there. Okay. Any questions so far? I do no. have one. So the yeah. prayer cards are a constant effect that'll just apply for the entirety of the campaign. Is that right? Well, the entirety of the scenario Okay. and or probably song. Uh, it won't necessarily last for the entirety of the campaign. Okay, got it. All right. Uh, if you go up to the upper right-hand corner of the clan board, you'll see the hostile cards. And uh, what hostile cards are used will be determined by the scenario setup. And also what uh, threat cards will be used will also be determined. Uh, so the small one that's already revealed here is the threat cards. So basically, this provides the AI for each of the three different kinds of threats while they're still unrevealed threats on the board. So generally speaking, the, the small dudes that are up at the top, a medium sized hostile, and then the big baddies are usually on the bottom. So up at the top, the small guys, they will have, while they're unrevealed, they'll have a combat value of three, which means that whenever they attack you from the bushes, you can't see what they're doing. You'll have to defend yourself from a three strength combat, which means you'll roll the number of defense dice that you have and you'll have to try, you're, you're trying to get at least three or more successes. Uh, you'll notice that they don't have a defense, and the reason that is is because you can't attack a threat without it being revealed, all right? So they don't need a defense value because you can't attack it just yet. When that hostile card is flipped over, which we won't do it right now, but when wherever we reveal one of these tokens, their hostile card will be flipped over and then their defense value will be shown there because then we'll be able to attack them. While they're still a threat, they'll have, for example, the small guys have an agility of one, the bigger guys have an agility of two. And then below that top row, the middle row here on the small guys, it says it gives their priority, the prey priority, who they go after first. It, the first symbol means that they're going after the person that is closest to them. If there's more than one hero that's equal, they go to the second, which means on the top row here, it's the, the person that has the most wounds. And then finally, as we were talking about rank earlier, uh, it is unique for all the different heroes. This is the final tiebreaker. It will always go after the person who has the highest rank in, in Viking society. All right. So that's your prey priority for the small guys. For the second for the middle guys here, it's still the person that's closest first, but then they're a little bit different. They want to go after the person that has the highest valiance if there's a tie for the first thing, and then the Viking society will, will, will break the other. The keywords that are below the priority order, first of all, shoot one means that they can shoot from a range of one hex away. The cowardness means uh, that that's actually probably going to be changed to cowardice. Uh, but that simply means that if they can shoot at you, they will not move closer to you. They will simply keep stay at a distance and then shoot. And then trapped there down on the bottom on the second, you know, the, mid, the medium sized baddies. Uh, that simply means that a hero who, who finds himself in an ambush situation with this hostile receives an additional wound. So mm -hmm. ambushes are bad to begin with, but if you get ambushed by these guys, it's plus one wound, which is really bad because ambushes give you wounds that you can't defend against. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the, the mid-sized baddies are uh, probably the guys you want to not get ambushed by. This is kind of So fun. Sam, based on uh, what you just read, 
Go ahead, Jesse. I was going to say, this is this is kind of fun playing uh, the cameraman because I get to root for the traps to happen. <laughs> oh, Sam, based on what you said, apparently I am the prized target for everyone here. At least uh, normally, because I have the highest, uh, I have the highest valiance, and I also have the highest rank amongst all our characters. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, as long as you don't, as long as you are, uh, uh, if you're talking about Drang, yes. Well, see, Drang is is not ever going to be. Well, let me see. If you play Drang correctly, <laughs> you won't ever make it past the first priority step. Okay. So should be in combat. Okay. <laughs> we'll see if I play him correctly. I hope so, hopefully. That's right. true. Yeah, you should be front line. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, one more thing while we're over at the clan board, and that is the fate cards. And what I'll do is I'll just show one so that you get an idea of what we're going to be expecting. But, uh, for example, at the top, it gives you a... And I'm not going to read the flavor text now, Jesse, because it'll mess it up. <laughs> All so, right. Not, the, not um, this time. Yeah. Text up at the top, don't read it right now, and then you'll have in the middle, you'll have uh, some kind of choice or decision that has to be made, or some kind of minor event that happens that we have to kind of account for. And then it'll show during the heroes phase, it'll show how many actions each hero will have. Then in the hostiles phase, it shows where new hostiles will pop up on the board at what totem uh, or spawn area. And then during the end phase, it also shows how much morale we're going to lose, or it could also show uh, another kind of micro event that's going to have to happen, uh, a decision to be made, or um, uh, another kind of bad thing that may or may not happen to uh, the heroes. All right, and that's generally speaking what the uh, fate cards are looking like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shuffle. And that's good to go. Uh, last thing, and then we'll get started, is the actual board. As we're looking at the board, I just want to point out a couple of things here. You'll notice that these gold tokens, some of them are turned over. We saw those on the round track already. When we move into those areas, we'll uh, consult the bookmark card, which is over here. And that will tell us what paragraph we need to read from the saga book. Mm -hmm. uh, when you come into an area that already has a revealed saga token, you may choose to read it. You don't have to do it. However, if you go into an area that has a unrevealed saga token like this one right here, and you search to reveal that saga token, then you must read the paragraph that it points you to. You don't have a choice at that point because you're actively searching out whatever that saga token is trying to tell you. All right, so... So in this area and in this area, if you do a search to turn those saga tokens over, you must then uh, go read the paragraphs. Uh, you'll see that up here and over here, we have threat tokens that are already on the board, um, but they're unrevealed, so we don't know what they are. Uh, and we have to try to reveal them before they ambush us so that we can have a better chance at uh, trying to hold them at bay. You also have a quarry token here, which may, which will be a spot that we can go get some more food. Um, and then uh, down, let's go to this corner of the board right down here because it has a couple of uh, a couple of, of uh, areas that are right next to each other that kind of gives you everything that we need. So here with the prayer. With the prayer site, um, that's denoted by these three symbols. You'll see the faith symbols at the bottom. That means that this is a designated area for prayers to be had. Uh, and that's where you can go to try to put one of those prayer cards into effect. Over here, you'll see that we have some other uh, symbols at the bottom of the hex. The first one is the agility symbol with a number after it. And what that simply means is that in order to go into this area you need at least two movement points in order to do that. So if you are standing at the prayer site right next to it and you have two movement points, you can move in there. But let's say that you're standing here, um, over here at the beginning, and then you move here for one. You do not, you've got one left. You don't have enough to go here. Okay, does that make sense? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. The second number is your perception skill. And what that simply means is that if you're trying to search for something in this hex, you are going to need to score at least three successes or more in order to find whatever is in that hex that you're looking for. That's what that means. And then that last symbol, the one on the side here that has a square with two trees in it, that is that denotes a face of the dice. And it's a cover uh, face of the die, which means that if you are in this hex and you are being attacked by a, um, a range attack, mm -hmm. then that face of the die will also count as a success. Correct. Thank you. Um, that side of the die will also count as a success in defense from a ranged attack. You're, blocking, cool. you're, you're ducking behind a tree or a rock or whatever it might be. Cool. Okay. Um, and I think, I think that's about it. We can get started. These uh, A's and B's over here, these are the totems uh, where new threats will be coming onto the board uh, from time to time. But that's pretty much it. So if you would like, we can go ahead and get started with uh, the Saga 1, the Bloody Horn Part part uh, 1, you know, first part. After the storms we've endured, the morale of the crew is an all-time low. None of our prayers seem to have been heard. Fishing is futile. These barren waters will not provide us with anything and the fever has managed to invade the ranks and even the strongest. Alvar has been sick for two days now, and his strength seems to be failing. The elements are against us. An insidious wind tries to wear away what little hope we have left, and the mist is stifling all of our senses. It's hard to fight against the despondency that weighs down on our feeble shoulders. Yet... The shape that emerges on the horizon escapes no one. Is it a hallucination? This massive, spinny neck, surmounted by a dragon's head with a gaping mouth? But our minds are deceiving us, as I quickly realize that nearer we draw to the coast in the end, it is only the prow of our King Hakon's Drakkar, hoisted on top of a wooden tower. The whole ship is struck down with bewilderment. But we do not lose hope. Though the blanket of white that surrounds us, a horn resonates. We sound it repeatedly into the hope of hearing an answer from our loved ones. But only an icy silence accompanies the last strokes of our oars. Now, in the most painful manner possible, we must deal with a small rocky shoreline with shards as sharp as Ufvund's blade. A path stretches out in front of us, tracing irregular curves along a silent coastline. It is shrouded in a mist that dogs our every step. We must hurry. Many of us are wounded, and our jarl Alvar is dying. His daughter Erika is at his side, and that's the only comfort he can get for now. The proud Bergen jumps to the ground determined to climb the path that separates us from our brothers and to bring help. The fittest among us will follow her. All right. Well done. <laughs> All right. Thank so you. Have, thank you. Uh, uh, what you'll see also on that is that uh, the three unplayable characters are Alvar, Petronia the Queen, and Erica, who is the daughter of Alvar. And Bergen is a mandatory character, and then we can choose any three other characters to join her. So we've done that in uh, the setup. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, Ber uh, Bergen is over here. I've chosen Leseline, a Christian slave. Goose has chosen Drang, successful geek. Uh, you are <laughs> over here with Ingvild the Witch. Um, so we've got a pretty good... Uh, smattering, I guess you could say. We've got a couple of pretty good fighters, and then we also have a couple healers as well. Since um, you know the characters, Sam, could you run me through uh, just who these these other three characters are on the board? Yes. So, Leseline is uh, the slave. Uh, she's a Christian slave that was uh, taken captive in one of the uh, clans, uh, you know, uh, 
pillages and uh, she's uh, sh she's strong on uh, first of all uh, willpower she's got a pretty good willpower so she's uh, she's a faithful Christian uh, she's also uh, pretty good with survival um, and she's very quick with the agility of three she also has some pretty cool uh, special abilities that um, allow her to dodge um, attacks and stuff like that so um, that's pretty much her background. She's she's just picked up. Ingvold is a uh, is is kind of like the uh, the medicine woman, if you want to put it that way, of the of the clan, where uh, she has been very helpful to King Hakar, uh, Hakan, sorry, uh, in the past, uh, with uh, helping him understand the different visions that were being given to him from the gods. Uh, she's also a very good healer as well. And she also has that that owl that uh, helps her out in some tight tight uh, tight spots as well. So Drang is a berserker. He's well versed in uh, fighting and combat, and uh, he's a berserker. He will uh, he he lives for combat. He loves uh, doing that kind of thing, and so he's well respected. Uh, he's got that uh, level ten for his Viking ranking uh, his rank in Viking society. So uh, he's. He's uh, good to go as well. Bergen is, well, uh, she's your your typical shield maiden. I mean, she, uh, the guy, you know, the guys in the clan don't mess with her because they know that if they lose, they're going to lose something that uh, they're very much attached to. That can be easily cut off. Um, like and, a hand, per se. Sure. Uh huh. <laughs> that sounds about right. Uh, she uh, crushed uh, the skull of a bear. Uh, and she wears that bear uh, around her uh, shoulders. And she also has a familiar who was the cub of that bear. That uh, So she's, she's also formidable in combat. She's also very good at uh, short range combat as well um, because she has that shoot one ability. Um, so, but she's, her, her forte is pretty much melee combat, but she also has a, a little bit more versatility with that shoot one. Uh, so that those are the four core characters that we've that we have in uh, this expedition scenario. It's looking pretty good, I think. I, um, I'm feeling good about this. Uh, I played this uh, by myself with different characters, and I didn't do so well. But I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. About so you're, this. you're guaranteeing that we're going to win no matter so what, right? I think what he's saying no, is he hasn't watched sport. the channel. I think I think that's the... <laughs> there's no green mice in this, right? <laughs> Q in green mice, Jesse. Bring him over. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we have to do is that the the highest ranking Viking uh, is going to be the leader, which is Drang. So he'll take the leadership token, and then he'll also be given the scout token. Now, what the scout token does is that denotes which hero is going to act first in the round. And then from that person, we go clockwise around the table. Um, if we were controlling multiple characters, you would, uh, the person who, I'm sorry, the character who goes first would go first. And then the next person would be able to choose which one of their characters they want to act next and so forth until everybody has, um, until everybody has, uh, activated their characters. But since we're only controlling one, we just go around the table once, um, until we've all activated our characters. So generally speaking, the whole point of this, where you may be asking, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, we need to follow the storyline, so we need to hit those saga tokens. Uh, we also are probably going to need to get more food. Uh, we need to be careful with not being ambushed by the threats that are out there. We need to reveal those threats as quickly as possible so that we can fight them uh, and, and, and seek to take them out. Uh, we also want to find out what these other saga tokens here, the unrevealed ones, are, uh, to possibly find out more about where where our clan is, uh, where our clan is. Mm -hmm. So that's generally speaking where we are. And now, Drang, before we flip over the fate card, you need to decide who is going to go first. You cannot choose yourself. Darn it! That's exactly who I was going to go for. Ah, uh, <laughs> Bergen, <laughs> you will begin our amazing combat. Oh. Well, uh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going right. to slowly try and find a voice for Drang, so please excuse me as I explore <laughs> all these different sounds. Go no, don't tell Sam. Jesse that there's flavor text on the back of the hero portraits. Oh, no. 
Hold on. Why what? did you do that? Why, <laughs> Geek? Why? All right. Huh? I like flavor right. text. And for some reason, yeah, at, least, at least seven other people in my community like flavor text. So <laughs> I love playing text. games, Jesse. I'm not keeping you from it at this point. That was successful, <laughs> Geek. <laughs> I'm just here to tap right. Goose, so that's... All right, so next what we need to do now that we have the first player token, uh, the scout token has been, been given, we need to go ahead and go to the fake card. We'll draw the top one and flip it over. And now we go ahead and read whatever that is. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. The event is called Death From Above. You are so intent on watching out for what is happening around you, you have forgotten that danger can come from above. A crack of branches above your head suddenly reminds you of this, but it may already be too late. So the scout <laughs> must place the following threat in the closest forest or bush adjacent to him. So you're going to take one of those randomly, uh, one of those uh, tokens, and you're going to place it in either this area or this area. Um, great job, Cadius. <laughs> I'm already. I'm already. This, this is just like Arkham. Okay, I'm going to put it over here so okay. that we have a, a way of going towards the the progressing the storyline a little bit. Okay. All right, so now that that's happened, uh, we'll go straight into our heroes phase uh, where uh, Bergen is going to be at, uh, going first and she will have two actions as will the rest of us. So now Bergen, you are able to go. Don't forget that you do have your uh, familiar with you. Olaf the bear can be deployed. And if you read Olaf's special text, you'll see that he can search areas, reveal threats, and then attack at the same, uh, in the same, you know, in one fell swoop. So, uh, okay. okay, he does take some food. You know, he has to get some uh, motivation uh, for doing what you want him to do. Uh, so he does cost one food to activate. But we also have that quarry token sitting right there. We might get some more food pretty easily. We do start with four. Okay. Well, I uh, I think I'm definitely going to deploy Olaf. Okay. In the region there. Okay, so go ahead and just take his token and put him there. Uh, his agility of, I believe it's two, um, yes. allows him to be deployed up to two spaces away from her. Um, yeah. But I know, think I'm just gonna go that, there. Is, is better, yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna go there. I I took the food off the the clan board there and put okay. it. Okay. Um, All right. So he has a perception. So what is his perception? So his perception is two. All right. So, so he'll he'll roll two dice, and he needs to get at least two successes. Okay. In order to flip that token over and see what it is. All right. Wish me luck here. And you hey. got it. Oh my gosh! That was so, so close. Go ahead and flip that over. So what that means hmm. is the three pips here now. Just briefly, let me explain what that means. If that token were to ambush us, that means that whoever got ambushed would have to take three wounds that they would not be able Oof. to defend against. Ooh. And on top of that, three bad guys would show up there. So again, we don't want to be ambushed if we if we can at all uh, avoid it. Okay. So I'm going to take these three guys here, and they're going to go into that area. So and now kind of hostile it is now now we know what kind of hostile it is correct so we go over here and we flip over that card and we can take a look and see it now instead of doing three combats like the uh unrevealed threat token would have done they're only a two combat now nice and they only have a one defense which means that we have to score one success or more in order to knock out one of their miniatures and then they're going to also move one if possible but first thing that we need to do now that we've revealed them is read paragraph 33 in the saga book and that one is uh in the pdf version that's over here so uh right up here. at the top of the page there yeah go ahead somebody can read that in the bushes a constant rustling so they really are men or at least living examples of their most grotesque idol 
Gestic gesticulating. Just gesticulating. <laughs> In a it out, dance use your resembling martial training, they advance, spears and lances in hand, their faces hidden by masks with terrifying expressions. Muffled cackles get louder, and a malevolent glint pierces through their lifeless eyes of wooden faces of the wooden faces they wear wear. Yep. Alright, so that's just a little, you know, flavor text. Jesse is probably drooling. I um. all right. I, <laughs> genuinely, I'm already immersed. <laughs> Like I no seriously I'm like okay can I have I'll if just, maybe can I has more yeah can I has more Why are they upside down all right so we've read the paragraph and now it, it, the the hostile card also shows actually it replicates the prey priority that it had on the threat card as well yeah. because these are the same people they're still going to be attacking in the same yeah. uh, format it's just that now we can attack them and do some damage so now with Olaf being there. He has roared and shown himself worthy, and he has a two combat strength, which means that he'll be able to roll two dice now and try to take awesome. one of them out for us. Awesome. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna roll these two dice, and I'll target one of them. It doesn't matter which one I target. At no. This um, and you lower them by one oh, defense, right? Awesome. Oh wow. Yeah. He does. He lowers them by one defense. So, so they have no one goes away, and there's still two Wait. left. Still two. Um, and that's all Olaf can do, right? To my that's understanding. That's correct. That was one of Bergen's actions. Awesome. Now she can take another action, which she does have that shoot one ability. Mm. Maybe she won't take a shot. So on the, the shoot one, do I just roll one die for that? Or mm -hmm. am I rolling all of my Use your valiant skill. It, it's an attack that you okay. use your valiant skill for. The shoot one just means that you can shoot one hex away. Yep. Somebody, uh, you know, okay. so it's like, a range. like shoot three or okay. shoot two. Uh, awesome. So it, it's the range. Awesome. So then I guess I'll shoot into that space. Okay. Uh, another. And so her valiance is five. So she'll be rolling five dice. Her other special abilities that she has are for melee combat. So they don't really help you here, but you do get a, a, a five die roll. I, I assume, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. we know who's going to be rolling every attack from now on. So, <laughs> Katus, how did, that is, how did that work, Katus? Just just describe that for me. Oh, the, how, how did the attack work? Thematically. You know, so thematically, I'm, I'm, a, I'm shooting a bow and arrow, I assume, right? Yeah. And With explosive tipped arrowheads, apparently. But what I'm envisioning <laughs> is... Kind of like Dark Souls, these are silver archer arrows. You know, they are... I'm shooting, uh, like, spears at yeah. this point, and I cut a dude in half. That's what I envision with that kind of roll. <laughs> that, that could very well be true. That could very <laughs> well be true. I mean, no one's going to tell her otherwise, so... <laughs> right. I All lost right. her hand because those of Those are you, my so. two actions, so then that yep, will lead me your two actions, so now turn. it's Angel's turn. Um, okay. And uh, she, you, you have two actions to do whatever you wish. I think my best case scenario right now is I'm going to try to get the, my prayer in, in the game early. So I'm going to head over oh, to the prayer yeah. spell. All right. Because anytime I'm with you, I grant you my faith so I can give you the bonus of my prayer. Correct. Ooh, Excellent, because that's correct. what I was going to do too. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and well, benefits from that prayer. I appreciate it. Yeah, yes. two people benefit from that. Only one from Christian and only one from Norse. Yeah, so go ahead and head right, over so here. Let's... That's my first action. And I yep. know I can. I have two agility, so I could have moved further, but that's all I really need to do. Correct. Um, and then my second action will be prayer, and my will is three. I need two successes, and there's nothing I can do to modify that. Correct. So That's three denoted dice. by the card at the bottom now. Yeah. Woohoo! Three Congratulations. Success. That was phenomenal. That's great. So we go ahead and put that into play over here on the clan board. And let me move that over just a little bit. There we go. All right. So now, uh, Animal Senses simply says that when this hero searches an adjacent area, uh, the tree side of the dice, the cover side of the dice, also counts as a success but only wild characters can benefit from that but as you said earlier if Ingvild is in the same hex as somebody else 
then they will get the benefit of having that that wild faith as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that was one and two. So Ingvild is done. Now it's Leseline's turn, and she has an agility of three. What is her perception? Her perception is only two. Erg. So that would be a so shot. you have the ability to get into I do. that unknown uh, space. but I, I, I was thinking about coming over here next turn because now I get the plus, or I get the bonus, and plus my perception is four. So, Ooh, yeah. But I can keep working my way this way, too. All right. Well, what I think I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to just move here and try to get us some food. So that her survival's uh, we, pretty good. Yeah, her survival's pretty good, and uh, every success will be one food. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me double check to see if she has any bonuses. I don't think she does. Um, she can pray in any area where she is alone. So that's a cool thing. And if she prays, the offering cost for uh, if she pays the offering cost by suffering wounds uh, instead. Uh, so if she's alone, she can. Um, she doesn't have to roll. She can basically just, uh, well, she has to pay for the wounds. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and roll my three dice. Because I can't add anything to it. So I'm just going to grab these guys over here. And then uh, roll. Uh, not that great, but not bad either. So whether it was successful or not, the quarry token is removed because even if you don't shoot it and get the food, it still runs away. Uh, but we do get to get uh, two food added to our total. So hey, that's something, at least. And two. All right. So that is that is that's the end of Leseline's turn, and now it is Drang's turn. Well, unfortunately, because Geek ended his turn on the prey area, I will not be able to go in there and pray. Um, so that's that's sad. Uh, what should I do, everyone? Should I come in and take out this fiend here, but then, you know, probably suffer being ambushed later on? Again, I am the tank, so I guess I could take it. Well, here's the thing. You're not being ambushed by these guys, because if you look at their their AI... Um, oh, cowardice. Cowardice. Mm -hmm. And so they're just going to attack you at range. They're not going to ambush you. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. it's only two dice. It's only uh, you're only rolling against two. So <sighs> okay, okay. So I'll I'll go ahead and do that so I can uh, start clearing off the board here a little bit. Good. I will use my first action to move in there, um, mm -hmm. and then I will follow up with an attack. Uh, do I want to activate? So I am. Uh, I'm. Am I technically alone because this, or or is a familiar you considered? You are. No, the familiar is pretty much ignored. Uh, that alone means that you don't have any other heroes nearby. Per oh yeah, when this. He okay, got it. So I roll seven dice. Um, I I'm Goodness. thinking I will take him down. I have a good Maybe. feeling about this. I'm gonna turn the vermin into a pile of goo. Hey, Jan, so would you like you me to roll the dice for you, or? There we are. Oh, no worries, Jesse. I think I did good. Very so nice. I, I think I just rush in there and, like, I, I don't even know where I am, and I just let go of my axe. Like, I put it down on the floor to kind of, like, rest my shoulders, and I cut him in half accidentally. Yeah, it's I, like, I, oh, I oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. So um, that is the end of the turn. So what happens first during the hostiles phase is that the threat tokens will move all right so this threat token over here isn't going to move because it is already within range of drain and so he's going to go ahead and attack but that will come next this token over here is going to move one toward the other group and then they would also attack because that's the next thing threats will attack um and so that's what this guy will do so a strength two against Drang is happening right now. So Drang will need to roll his defense and try to get two or more successes. And block. I would roll two, three because of my loner ability. Yes, that is correct. You got this. You got there it. You go. Yay! All right, so no damage done there. These guys over here don't have anybody to attack mm -hmm. at a range of one. So we're good to go there. And now hostiles, in other words, revealed 
hostels. Like for example, if we didn't take the three that were over here where Drang is, they would uh, move and attack, mm -hmm. but we don't have any hostels on the board right now, so we, we skip that. But now we go to the fate card and it says that more hostels show up on the B area, which is over here. Oh, it's enemy B, got it. Yep. Um, and does anything else show up? Nothing else shows up. So that's the end of the hostiles phase. And now we simply have to lose one morale because the fate card tells us to. So okay. we'll go ahead and take one morale off. And that's the end of the round. We'll go ahead and take this marker and move it to the second uh, circle here. But that means that we need to read Saga Token C, which is paragraph 245. So if somebody would like to do that, let's go ahead and get to it. All right. A rustle followed by a dry, steady clacking sound makes you turn your head towards a rock overlooking the trail. A scruffy small person painfully climbs <laughs> to the top and peers up at you through the black orbits of the skull that serves as its mask. Then he starts drumming the rock with what was once a shin. The blows resonate through the forest and soon there are screams coming from all over to answer him. He's just ordered the assault and you are the target. Ha, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> now, reveal hostile card three and place the scarecrow and totem C in the designated areas. All right, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and reveal hostile card C, which is that right oh. there, which oh. gives us a little bit of an idea. So if we look at the hostile card real quick, it shows us that, first of all, it doesn't have a combat value. So this particular miniature isn't going to be hurting us, but it does have a defense value which means that we can kill it, all right? So, uh, which is something, and, and the third characteristic means that it's not going to move. So what is it doing here? Well, it's providing this special effect. As long as the Scarecrow is in play, you apply this effect at the hostile phase. So as long as it's up there drumming the rock with the shin bone, mm -hmm. uh, more bad hostiles are gonna be showing up at Totem C. All right, mm -hmm. so we have to go ahead and place that on the board and figure out where that's going to be. So if we look, um, uh, la, 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 la. we need to go one more. And this tells us right here where mm -hmm. it's going to go. So totem C is going to go down right here next to where... Uh, uh, B is, right? Here. So right next to B? It's going to be right here. Oh, there? Okay. Yeah, that's where the totem okay. shows up. And then the actual scarecrow model goes here. will show up right, right here. here on this rock. Got it. And Oof. notice that it's on the rock, <laughs> and those rocks are considered impassable. Mm. So we can't go there and melee attack it. We have to attack it from range if if we're to try to get to it. Drang no good. <laughs> yeah. No. Good, Only the right. shield maiden, now, uh, the shield maiden is now the shield uh, maiden uh, in attack at range, and I believe she's the only one. So she is the only uh, one, yeah. Yeah, we need to we need to be careful with her. That's the beginning of the second round. Now, uh, Drang, you need to choose who's going to be the scout this turn. Me? No, I can't. I do want to go <laughs> before. I do want to pray, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put it here to our little Christian friend, um, and hopefully, they do not pray this turn <laughs> please oh wait actually no 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 this is a bad move geek please move out of there so that i can pray okay. Ooh. yeah the reason he's saying that is because when um there are two um characters of opposing faiths in the same place neither of them can pray mm -hmm. um nice. but ingvold because she gives um her ability her faith to other people, um, it still stops them from praying because it doesn't replace their faith. It only adds to it so that they can gain the benefit from the prayer card in certain situations. But as far as praying is concerned, um, if you have two characters of opposing faiths, they can't pray. Okay, so now we reveal the next fate expedition card, correct? That is correct. Okay, so event... The frenetic horde. 
The relentlessness of these accursed creatures is blood chilling. They rush at us, driven by a force fierce hatred. Valhalla has never seemed so close. Until the end of this turn, all hostile and threats gain plus one valiance and plus one defense. Heroes Ooh. have two actions, and hostiles will spawn from Totem B. Yep. We're going to get lose all the voices from Jan, I think. I love oh, it. every <laughs> single one. My entire repertoire is being put at work, sir. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Ingvold, you are first. Go for it. So, here, here, here's my two options. I can either... Well, I'm going to move here either way, because I think that's a smart option. I am kind of worried about... Because do the, do the big guys, will he spawn and then attack? Or like right away, if he has, no, he doesn't have range, so he'll spawn. But he could he could ambush me, right? Yeah, it's possible. So I don't want to <laughs> move there then. Be brave. He doesn't have to move, so he could move into there. Um, I'm a healer. <laughs> I'm a healer and a like scout, so I can't really. Uh, of course, I I actually I could I could put my owl there. And that yeah, would say put your owl there. I can yeah. deal with like the little guys. That's not. Yeah, problem. I think that. Makes but you're sense, gonna get so. attacked two times, Cadius. Is that okay? Yeah, I think I'll be. I, I have four defense. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have a pretty high value. Well, well, here's the thing. If you have people that spawn into the sea, mm -hmm. and you're sitting there, they will automatically ambush you. Yes. No, no. I, I was saying put, put be, my owl I'll be over here. There. Okay. Because, because if I put my owl in the sea, then it can't move or attack. Yeah, I, that's, I, I get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking about doing. And I think I think that'll make the like most that. sense. Okay. So that takes two food to uh, deploy your familiar. Food. Mm. Bert eats two food? Yeah. Bear eats oh, less God. food than my bear. So just throwing it out there. It's a baby. That bird's not going to be able to fly very much longer. Oh, and we don't have any more... <laughs> Are there any more game on the board? Uh, no, there isn't. Nope. So we are going to have to be careful of food. Yes. Is food only for familiars, Sam? Generally speaking, it's used for familiars and to get extra actions when we only have one denoted by the fate card. Mm -hmm. So guys, no more familiars for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. <laughs> Um, and so we can reveal the saga token until um, the, our to next turn, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Until yeah. somebody searches it, we have to do search action to reveal it. Yes. Yep. Okay. So I'll I'll search and then get out of there on the next turn. <laughs> so now, uh, less if I can, depending on, of course, what, what whatever the saga I, token happens. Leslie, she's pretty good at defending on her own. Uh, she's got dodge, and she also has a defense of I think four. So uh, I'm not worried about these guys shooting at me. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, two and go over here and then reveal this A token. Uh, so that is uh, paragraph 150. So An let's... open grave composed of a heap of decomposing flesh and guts lies before you. The stench given off by this foul mass is truly unbearable and makes you heave. Who is responsible for this horror? You summon up your courage to investigate. Maybe, with a little luck, you will find something useful. Choose one of these two options. You search the grave with your hands, or you use a tree branch to probe the grave. I'm definitely getting in there with my hands. Yeah. What is, you know, is a dead body? You gotta poke it with a stick. You plunge <laughs> your... This is not a zombie game, so... Uh, <laughs> well, we'll find out. You plunge your hands into this disgusting heap, and you quickly realize that this pile of guts is nothing but local game. Perform a test. Survival difficulty two. All right. So her survival is a uh, three. So I'm going to roll three dice, and I need to get two successes. Haha. -ha. Nice. Congratulations. So, uh... With horror, you recognize the blue Ekru cloth, worn by members of King Hakon's guard. This search has not been in vain, because you also find an object that could be of use to you. Draw three, item remains, keep one, discard the rest. First and thing we do. Yeah, and then move the, the find your clan objective uh, forward. forward one space. So we, we know, we, we recognize that this 
dead body is one of King Hawkins' guards. Uh, but now we get to, I get to uh, take uh, some of these item remains and uh, flip them over and choose one. So there's a shield. Uh, and then there is a uh, helm and a, uh, is that a torch? I think it's a hatchet. Think, yeah, a hatchet. It's, it's a bone axe. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Uh, so basically what these cards are here is that, um, like, for example, this bone axe here, I have to be able to, I have to be a wild character in order to use that. So I'm not going to choose that. Um, these other two will basically give me that keyword mm -hmm. once throughout the course of the rest of this scenario. So I can either have protection or dodge. I already have dodge uh, as a special ability for my character. So I'm going to take protection and I'll discard these two um, over here to the side. And you said only once per, per scenario? That is correct. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's a one and done type of thing. Okay, cool, cool. Got to choose your moment carefully. Mm hmm. Yep. Okay, and Sam, I think that is that concludes your action, correct? It does. Okay, so everyone, I will be moving to. I am all by my lonesome here in this wonderful, wonderful area, and I will go ahead and perform a prey action, which will, cons will I think, is three dice, right? Because it's will that I'm using. Yep. So, uh, with further ado, let's see. Let's use these guys and roll. Oh, no. Wait, no. Is that? No. Is it a success? I forgot. Oh, well, two. You, no, you're one off the success. You can, you can take, take a wound. Uh, you can, no, I'm sorry. You can lose a morale to take a wound uh, to, to get a success. Guys, would you allow me to uh, lose us a morale? So That's I fine. can get this. It will help me become you know even more I, of a I badass. Don't know how significant it is, so I'd say yes. Yes, <laughs> excellent. So I maybe just throw these on, out. It'd be huh? no, maybe later on it would be no, please don't ever lose morale. But uh <laughs> for now, yes. Glory to Tia. It, trust me, this will be worth it, everyone. I promise. Okay. <laughs> I'm done though. Uh so Katie is okay, down to so you. It's my my go here. Um whew. so I guess first action here is I'm just gonna move two into this uh very exposed clearing. Um now is it better that I reveal the token here or should I let it be? Because if I reveal well, it then like I'll well, see the enemies are there yeah right now um it's going to provide you with it's gonna it's probably gonna hit you with a um a level three attack uh okay. if you reveal it depending on how many are there it it could hit you with a, a level three or a level four basically with this threat token here you're it's going to be a level three attack now if you investigate and this flips over and it happens to be that three extra people get added there they will still attack you at range but it's going to be plus two because if there are three there it'll be a base two attack plus one for each of the other ones that are there so they'll actually mm -hmm. do a strength four attack on you instead of a strength three so depending on that you know you're not going to be ambushed by that token because of the special keywords that are denoted to it on the threat card. Um, so you, you can make your decision based on that. I I feel like I'm just not going to do an additional action this turn. Wait, what okay. about healing, Cadius? Yeah, I mean, you could. I guess I could. That's true. You could try to heal yourself. Especially I mean, since you're going so... to get hit. <laughs> you'll, basically roll, you'll, you'll basically roll one die and uh you'll either heal or you won't if you roll a blank then you'll hurt yourself a little bit more because you're not a healer okay well uh let, let's give that a shot i guess okay how good are my rolls oh very, my good. Nice. very good so you get there you go one. see you just got to believe in yourself yeah <laughs> it, it looks like just, just I believe I can heal. <laughs> Just so you guys know, it looks like also over here, it lists the number of threat tokens. So, like, we've already revealed one three-point threat token. 
So there's only one three-point threat token out of all the other threat tokens that we might face. Where, where was that? Where did you see that, Geek? In the song the, setup uh, book. Setup. Ooh, okay. Mm. okay. All right. Very cool. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. Okay. All I right, figured well, there'd that... be a list of, like, probabilities somewhere, so that's kind of good. That's kind of good. <laughs> Yep. Uh, Sam, are there going? Is how are how are we pulling these? Like in the in the final game, is it going to be through a bag, or am I just going to shuffle the tokens in in the space? Is there like a particular way of doing that? One of the stretch goals that we have unlocked on the Kickstarter is that there will be threat token bags mm -hmm. that uh, you'll be able to pull those threat tokens from. I have to be honest, I really dig bags, <laughs> so yeah. I hope that <laughs> I hope we reach that goal because that'd be cool. Well, no, it's. It's 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 already been reached. It's already been oh reached. okay. Well, there there you go. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Very awesome. Okay, uh, so then we move on to the hostile phase then. Phase, yep. Yes. So uh, threats will move first. So we have a couple of different threats for this guy to move towards. Um, looks like uh, Leslie is the nearest, so she's that one's going to move there. Um, these guys don't need to move because they're going to stay, but he will come in here as well. So mm -hmm. this guy will move in here. Um, okay. And now we have to... Wow. This, this or less be... lean. Oh, this is bad. Oh, so this I have a question, bad. Sam. When, when, is, when does summoning happen? Is it at the same time as the, the event card? Is that when the C character comes in? It's no. The... That happens last during the, during the hostile space. Yeah, Got of it. the hostile okay. space. Correct. Mm. So... Um... <laughs> All right, so now all of the threats <laughs> have moved. Now oh, all of the threats are going to attack me now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm sorry, oh. Katie, for giving you horrible advice. We, we, <laughs> we, have, we have a couple of different things. So we go to, um, first of all, the person who's closest. So these two have two viable targets. But then we go to the one that's most wounded. And at mm -hmm. that point, I think it's Lesseline. Um, yes. <laughs> so she's going to face, uh, two, three attacks. uh, yeah, pretty much. But, but, I'm but guys, so sorry. Lessling has dodge and she's also in a wooded area. So she's going to be fine. <laughs> All right. Well, here, here's the thing though, that there, she's only going to face two attacks, not three, because she'll face one from this hex and then she'll face one that is strength four from this one because it's, oh. okay. there's two threat yes. tokens. Combined. By what you described yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So the strength three, uh, let's see. She has a defense of four. She also has dodge. So, um, yeah. Uh, also protection. She <laughs> and she also has protection. So I get five dice on both of these. And, if you're, if you're uh, using protection, right? Or is it right, through, if. throughout the entire round? Correct. So what I'm going to do on this first one, I'm only going to use four um, and go from there. So let's go ahead and roll. This is a strength three. Yeah, so you good. got it. Hey, look at that. On that. Now yeah. for the strength four, Just I am going to go ahead and use protection and uh, roll these as well. Oh, that doesn't count. This one doesn't count. Oh, okay. No, no, you're fine. No, no, I, don't no, count. Nice. It. I don't care what Jan, you say. Jan was so quick to be like, it Very doesn't nice. count if it's bad. Oh, wait, no, it, that clearly counts. Only this die, guys. The one that landed here, nope, not nope. everything. Clearly that one still counted. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good job, so Sam. Uh, so she's, she's good at defending. So that's not bad. However, <laughs> um, we have a bad situation here now we we definitely don't want to leave these guys uh unrevealed for much longer because we're about to have some company it's, it's almost uh, as yeah. if yep. your brute is off praying somewhere yeah <laughs> um i did yeah, that tactically like that. okay what is drang doing he doesn't pray what's wrong with him <laughs> um it will benefit us all later i promise yes yes <laughs> yes okay <laughs> So now we don't have any hostels that are available, but now we do have uh, some uh, of these small dudes that come out on B again. And thanks to the Scarecrow over there, we have some middle-sized dudes that show up right here on level C. Um, hmm. So that's not good. 
But they're not revealed saying. yet, so we don't get to know who they are, right? And we also get ambushed. But now well. we also uh, lose one morale. Woohoo! And now we're done with that round. Your familiars come back to you. And now we need to have a scout chosen again, Drain. Okay. Turn order up. I will put them, I will move that there. Uh. Oh, you need to move the round tracker. Sorry, I moved it already. So okay, good. So, so he, okay, so here's what I'm planning, guys. Um, I think I'm gonna take a food this turn, so I can do two moves. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. So I can do two moves, he's like, and then take out everybody. The bear, but I'm gonna use the food. No, no, no. So, so here's the here's the reason. So what I'm thinking is. Cadius or Lacine, if you guys can search here or just reveal these threats, um, I can go in, right, with using a food and then do a whirlwind action and take everyone out at the same time. Okay. Yeah. And since I'm already boosted because of the prey, right, um, can you, you move know, that it should be good. Yeah, because I'll do two move actions. You can only do one move action per turn. Including yes. even if I eat food? Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay, that's then. Been... <laughs> Scrap my plan, everyone. Retreat! <laughs> <laughs> everyone run. <laughs> <laughs> that's my best advice right now. Um, right. <laughs> okay, so what do we do then? Who would like okay, to go so my, my plan mm -hmm. is I can get to the Scarecrow and I can kill him this turn. So and that we don't have... Like, rounded, right? Yeah, so I'm I'm surrounded, but I can get to the scarecrow and kill him. I don't know if that should be a priority at the moment or not, but it seems like an army of small guys continually being spawned along with what, or the big guys, right? Because he's spawning yeah. the yeah, the big guys. Big guy. If we could keep him from spawning any more of those guys, that might be good. A hundred percent agree with you. I'm I've gone ahead and given you the scout token. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Um, uh, we can well, that way we can respond to the failure. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Yeah. our next event, moral fervor, fervor, fervor. fervor. Um, those of you who worship the one and only Almighty God are calling for His help in facing these ungodly and unwholesome threats. May the Lord give them strength they need to make His word heard. Once during their activation, all Christian heroes may add their will value to another attribute before performing a test. And we will have two actions this round. It's pretty good. Awesome. Okay, so That's once during their activation, all Christian heroes may add their will value to another attribute before performing a test. So you can take your will stat and add it to another stat before you make your... Ooh. Uh, I really wish I, I was Christian for right? just this round. Well, Leslie is a Christian. Yeah. Very well, nice. Well. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, Bergen, though you are up. All right, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I said here. I'm gonna move two. Okay. Which triggers B. And then, oh, that's right. well, so I don't have to do that if I don't want you don't? to. You, no, you do unless I, unless I reveal it right, then you have to do it. But if I don't, then I don't have to actually do that this turn. Mm, that's that's right. That's true. Mm -hmm. So I just want to kill the scarecrow here. So I will use my shoot one. Okay. Well, here, here's another thing. It doesn't take an action to reveal that either. I mean, to re to read. Oh, it's it just doesn't take an action. To oh. or not to do. Awesome. Well, then let's just do that while I'm here. Then. Okay. Do you want to read it, Katie? So I already have it open for you. Sure. I will. I will read it here. I'm reading fifty four. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it will be. We'll have to turn the page as well. Okay. So the path leads between two rocks and becomes steeper. You may you can make out the top of the hill beyond which stands the tower that you saw from the boat. Even though you have to negotiate an outcrop of rocks by helping each other to get across, your destination seems very close now. This thought gives you the courage to press on and climb the last bit of ground that separates you from your destination. But your resolve disappears when you hear grunts. Two sinister-looking savages emerge from the forest and race down the slope towards you, <laughs> whirling their clubs above their heads. Add the section of territory as shown on the following map. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, oh, God. Um, 
<laughs> All right. Okay. I just find it funny because you like technically you weren't planning on doing it. <laughs> so I blame uh, you, Jim. Jim. Me? What do you mean? <laughs> me? <I blame> <laughs> oh, and we've got oh, we've got this beautiful pre-built. Very nice. Oh, okay. Are so these are these supposed to be separate hexagonal boards or are they chunks of hexagon boards? They they will be tiles that you okay. have to uh that you'll have to uh uh, add in, yeah. So mm -hmm. that's not that's perfect, cool. but I think it's good enough. Yeah, I think it's fine. There we go. Perfect. All right, so oh, there. that that okay. adds on sluggers. Add it. Um, let me let me go ahead and make sure we're doing this right. Yeah, two two middle guys are in the in the clearing Ooh. there. But uh, here's another thing that happens: this C totem moves over here, I believe. Oh, it's a C totem. Okay. And so do we there. now know who In, they are or not yet? Yes. Still? Now we do, yes. The G Saga token, did you put that out? No? Okay. I'm Got about that. to. I'm about to. Right okay. here. Okay. Out in the clearing over there, yeah. And so now we can turn these guys over since we have seen them. We know who they are. So we go ahead and flip them over. And as you can tell, they are not happy creatures. Oh, Lord. So uh, somebody's going to need to read 190, the paragraph there. Ooh, I have a voice. I have a voice. Go for it. Okay, let's see. Oh, almost. Oh, actually, yeah, it was that next page. And we're doing it a again. There we go. Thud okay. reverberates through nope. the pines. <sighs> From okay, the you are going to let me do it. Raised by the violent fall emerges a behemoth of a creature. Its groans reflect the inordinate, inordinate effort it must make to carry its own weight. The steam of its raucous breath escapes from the narrow nostrils on the skull, which serves as its helmet. So men come from the sky in these distant lands. Do they live in the trees? This prime primeval colossus advances, lifting a weapon made of carved bones, the same as those that litter the forest floor. The trees are graves. He is the grave digger. So, Jesse, I just want you to tell, I just want everybody to know that no one will ever hear this amazing voice I had planned because of Thank you. God. <laughs> well, geek, that's just rude. Maybe okay, <laughs> that is so, just rude. Because this guy has been revealed, right? So these two revealed sluggers. Um, in the next hostile phase, they'll advance towards me, but they won't actually ambush me, right? No, they won't ambush you. They'll just attack. They'll advance and they will attack. And their ferocity keyword means that they attack again. After they attack. <laughs> oh, so you okay? All right. Well, can't really run so, away at this point. So, so basically, uh, what that's going to mean is that you're going—they're going to move and attack you with a strength four attack twice. Okay. Uh, well, I can. Uh, I think I can deal with that. I have protection. So. Well, listen to you. Oh. Well, <laughs> the yeah, the yeah, other you know, thing. Nice for defense. It's pretty good. The other thing is okay. that Ingwild can come in and throw her familiar at you. Um, even if it does consume a food, I think this might be a good opportunity to do so. No, I think with five dice defense, I think I'm better off coming I... up and healing. Yeah, I I feel like I'll be okay. Oh, well, and it's yeah. only like let, face let, down. Let me just threats. kill the scarecrow here first. Let Let's yeah. just do that first. And Ber Bergen's well, full health anyways. So. All right. Yeah. The second second attack, uh, or rather, second activation for for Bergen. Let's see if you can take this yep. scarecrow. So uh, he has a defense of four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just have to tie him on the four. Mm -hmm. Four or more. That's correct. Four or more hits. Okay. I roll five dice on this. I believe Let's in See you. if I can uh, do it. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I got it. You did? Yep. I did. One, two, three, four. four. Well, Janet, oh, four. four, right. It's math. Math what? That's what the scarecrow gets for standing on a hill. Yeah. Yes. And that is the Knock her down. scarecrow in the game, right? Ooh, so. Cadius, how did she fall down? How did it fall down? Uh, from, so from the I envision, up? you know, it was a really close roll. So I envision, you know, it was too far for me to shoot. You know, I, I kind of chucked a pebble at something that would echo. The scarecrow got a little startled and slipped down the icy slope and uh, hit his head on a rock. And then, you know, nothing glorious. I'll tell a different the most, story. The most embarrassing way to die. Exactly. You know, I'll tell a glorious story of, of how I assaulted, you know, and, and climbed this impossible rock face. But uh, <laughs> right now, no, he just he just fell down from being scared. I love it. 
I like to think that that your shot actually you misfired a little bit because the two other behemoths spawned. So you oh, got a oh, first oh. action. Right I, I want to say that that uh, the shot actually missed, and the scarecrow kind of matrixed out of the way and then lost her balance. <laughs> <laughs> I like. <it. laughs> Um, so that is the end of my two actions there. So then yeah. it will move on to Geek. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and search. So I get mm-hmm. four dice to search. I believe in you. And or do I? Forest icon also counts for searching, or also counts as successes for searching here. Oh, no, does it? Oh, well, does it? Where? Oh, because, because of my prayer. Ah, yes. sweet. Oh. Okay. Mm. Oh, Very nice. three. One, two, no, it's three. only three, though. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, three's oh, enough, no, isn't it? No, no, no. Yay, it's in an adjacent three. area. Oh. Dun, How do you so search that is adjacent a fail. Area? You can search an adjacent area. You can search oh. your area or an adjacent. So this only works if I was adjacent to it? Yes. Yeah. I never would have moved here. <laughs> okay, move somewhere else then. <laughs> I, like I would have just stayed here, or actually no, I pro- no, I, yeah, I would have stayed here. No, um, no, 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 no. That, you that messed, up, here. that messed up everything. So, um, so why why don't you just move over here and then search it? Well, say you moved over there, and, and the search stays. Mm-hmm. So we reveal the token. Now it is official, and it is E, and E is forty-one. Well, but in, in order to activate that, you have to move in there now. Oh, okay, got it. I can do that on my turn if you like. Yeah. Uh, I, I, well, basically, what what she did was she said, "Hey, there's something over there in the woods. Go check it out." Mm-hmm. And so now, if he wants to drink, and go over there and uh, and and check out what what he is. I have something to do now, guys. Yay! Thank you. It is also to important to note there is an enemy that will uh, ambush. Attack. Mm-hmm. Another another thing that's important yeah, that's to note is that two rounds from now we have a D saga token over there that that may or may not be something we want to get to. A D yes. oh the D oh god. <laughs> I'm feeling we need right. to get to G as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll uh, I'll work on that. And but so I, I... okay, so how do we heal Alvar? Is that the, it's through these tokens, right, that we're revealing little by little? Well, you'll notice Alvar isn't even on the board right now, so mm-hmm. that won't come into play until spoilers next uh, oh. scenario. Oh, oh, okay. So this doesn't necessarily okay. I get it. It's multiple songs. So these are our song goals. This no, is... this is like an introductory song that has two scenarios in it. Okay, mm-hmm. got okay. it, got it. Very cool. Ooh. So I, I honestly think my next best action is just to go ahead and heal myself. <laughs> well, you could heal the guy that's going to get trampled on, which is me. No, but like I, I need to be not a target. <laughs> you know, I feel that one. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you can. I don't think you'll end up being a target. Because My defense is only two. So, but like, yeah, but they're going to go for nearest, that. dude. And I'm going to be near. I'm going to be nearest. And then the but next I, I round, I would have to move to heal you, right? Oh, do you? Oh, okay. I, 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 thought, I thought you could potentially do um, distance. Can you heal adjacent? No. It has okay. to be right. Okay. In their so area, I'm, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to heal myself because my goal is to move this way and help over here. But I think healing before I move that way because if I move that way and then some, suddenly I'm a target from these guys, that's going to hurt. No, yeah, for sure. Well, you can still can you you can still move, right? Like you can move now. You haven't used your move. I haven't, but I did a search action, so I've only got one more action. So I could move, but I would be a target if I moved. So that's why I'm going to heal. So that way, next turn, I could move and be less of yeah, a target. I feel that. Okay. And you I roll get... two dice because you're a healer. Yep. And I ignore the blank result. Correct. Awesome. I always assume oh, moving is for in the free action for some matter. reason. Very nice. Ooh. All right. Yeah, so that's, that's Ingvild. Yep. Uh, so Leslie here. Leslie has uh, his fire walks with me until the end of this turn. No hostile can move or attack in Leslie's area. I have that possibility, but it does cost mm-hmm. three morale, uh, which would not be good. That would take us down to four. You know, 
one yeah. one thing as far as you know so our our uh oh my gosh i can't remember what this is called over here the the fate you get to add your will to your uh whatever oh, yeah, yeah yeah right mm -hmm. so you're the only person who gets to do that yes so you might actually be able to kill one of these guys too if you want to do that hmm um I, I could definitely kill one of them, but I would have to get into melee attack with them. True. That, that's the only thing. But, I mean, I do have uh, the Dodd mm -hmm. and and a four defense, so I could possibly do well to... Uh, um, what is my will? Your will is three, right? A three. Yeah. So that would be a five valiance attack. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Um, that might be worth it. No, yeah, I think that... At least you have a very high roll chance on that. Do it. I like that. I mean, our berserkers way in the back, <laughs> and uh, here we are. Now. You guys leave me alone, boy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I just wanted to be stronger for you all, so that I could, you know, face the terrors that are to come. And no, in I, typical I, I, Norse fashion, we have charged ahead, not caring who is left behind. We've actually we're actually helping them divide and conquer us, which is probably not a good idea. But who knows? Maybe it'll work out. Um, I, I think Drang can definitely do something at least. So yeah, I'm hopeful. Sure. All right, so here we go. I'm going to roll five dice because I've got my uh, two uh, valiance plus my three will. So I'm I'm using this. Uh, special ability, and it's only once, right? Yeah, Sweet. once during the activation. So I'm um, going to go ahead and make this five die roll attack against these dudes. Let's see Come this. On. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, nope. Hey, that ties more. their uh, defense. Ties their defense. So, say, yes. so we have to get one. So we have to get equal two or better. One so guy uh, dies right there. Very nice. Dies out. And uh, so that's my second action. Oh, um, excellent. So guys, I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit perplexed as what to do here. I have two possible actions. I could one, two, move here, heal up so that I'm ready to face the uh, crazy amount of damage I'm going to re receive, or I could move here, reveal this for free, heal, and then get all this damage. Um, I'm not sure which is the best one. So, Sam, I think, do some of those yeah. tiles contain good things, or do they all contain behemoths running down from a mountain slope? <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes they contain uh, things that are useful. For example, when Leslie found that... Uh, that um, Graveyard. Or, uh, graveyard. Yeah. She was able to bring, you know, sure. to put a helmet on it. And, and use it. Uh, so sometimes it, it does give you good stuff. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily give you anything, but it will advance one of the tracks on the clan board okay. uh, on the scenario card so that we get closer to achieving achieving, uh, achieving some of our objectives. And so. our our end goal is just to find our clan, right? That's that's what we're doing right now? Um, we're, we're, yes, we're trying to get closer to... Uh, finding where our clan is, okay. and that may or may not be G. Um, but excuse me, pardon me. Uh, but it might be G Saga token or something to that effect. Yeah, that that would make sense. We had guessed that earlier. So yeah, <laughs> we're we're on our way there. So uh, you know, that goes. Yeah, so let's do it, guys. Let's. I'm just gonna move because everybody's gonna move towards me I anyway. Mean, some um, of us are on. They our are way. Yeah. towards me. I I want to flash back to the very beginning of this this video where. I asked a very specific question to Sam, and he said something along the lines of, well, if you're playing correctly, you're preserved. Stop it, probably... Jesse. <laughs> Never once has he been front lines. Never, Never once, once has he used his sword. I've seen you him guys charge the head. I said I telegraphed him oh, no. the first no, no. turn yeah. Go that I wanted to e. pray. Go here to E and rummage through some like Viking corpses and find yourself a helmet. <laughs> No, no, no. So these two guys are going to move towards me anyways. So I will be They're, taking all of this You're going to take it. The plus side is the two little guys you get to defend against. So yeah. this and you're guy, in the forest, so you can take less damage instead exactly. of being in the planes. See, Jesse, but I'm the, being strategic. The big guy is going to ambush you regardless of what you do. 
Yes, uh, yeah. yes, I know, I know, I know. But, but at least I'm alone, so I'll get an additional die. Sam Healy, take notes. True. This is strategic. Stop it, <laughs> Anderson. So, E. It's already up. 41. And let us I begin. Read. I want to read. Go ahead. All right, ready? Something glittering in the distance attracts your attention. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> and you decide to take a closer look at this strange phenomenon. When you get there, you realize that your curiosity has been aroused by a reflection of light on something metal. Sort of grotesque totem pole consisting of Viking helmets lashed to a pole has been erected on a mound of snow. The despicable talisman seems to defy you to stare at you furiously. You grasp the pole with both hands and tear it out. Then your anger fades and gives way to surprise. For in your hands is a beautifully crafted Viking javelin. Stripped of those cumbersome decorations, this perfectly balanced projectile is capable of impaling an enemy at close range. So you pick up artifact card number one. Ha ha! See, I told you I had a plan, everyone. All right, so there you have that. Oh, and you um, get a shoot one time. Awesome. Yes, I do. Then we get to continue. It says, as you continue on your way, you notice a scarlet stain on the very spot where the javelin was planted. It only takes a few moments to clear away the area and reveal the body of a member of the previous expedition. This macabre discovery shakes you deeply, for you had hopes of finding your Viking brothers and sisters, not in the best of shape, certainly, but alive, at least. This leads to a disturbing and repulsive hypothesis. The still fresh blood of the unfortunate man indicates that he was killed recently, and certainly with this javelin, a weapon belonging to your clan. Ooh, mystery. So move the objective, find your clan forward one I space. Have, uh, I have moved it one. Now perform a will test be. of will with a difficulty of two. So I can throw three dice. So let's yep. go ahead and yep. do that. Oof, wish me luck, everyone. And ah, raging. Eviscerated it. If we failed, we would have lost the morale, but you didn't, so we're good. Ha ha. Uh, so I think that was, unfortunately, that, that those were my two actions. Um, they were. Revealing the token was not an action, right? Yeah, revealing the token was not an oh. action, because I, I had already That's revealed true. it. So just That's move correct. it in Oh, true. Yeah, so you just moved. You have one more action you can do. So, you guys, go. should I reveal this before they ambush me? You should you try. definitely oh, should. I, should. Okay. I, well, I, apparently, I, too late. <laughs> you don't reveal I, it now. You have to re <laughs> roll I know. I first. accidentally pressed it. Um, now you have no I have what? a perception so, yes. of two. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I have no control over this next course of action. Um, <laughs> you didn't, there we go. You didn't roll them. You, you just, like, rotated. Hey, you flipped. There you go. I thought I did. No, you were just, like, switching sides. <laughs> Stop it, Anderson. Uh, so I say, laugh at me. I say you stick that back in the pile and you randomly draw one. No, 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 no. Remember, I, I have one success right now. I could lose one morale to just reveal that. I could, potentially. Uh -huh. Or we could use one of these resource you don't have tokens. One you, hmm? have, you, you don't have one success. I do, because of my no. oh, is it only. Oh, it's just melee attacks. Oh. Just melee attacks, Jan. Well, there we Mine go. Yeah, I, I'm definitely back, with uh, just pulling one of these out yep, randomly. Yeah, shuffling to them right now. And then, uh, Jan, yep. go, uh, go ahead and just draw one randomly. There you go, buddy. It wasn't on purpose. Oh, I know. I, I understand. Fate? It's just to, you know, keep the keep the spirit of the game here. <laughs> it was only one. It oh, would have been I, perfect. Yeah, that would have been awesome. That would have been great. Uh, you made it worse. <laughs> All right. It could still be a one. You it never know. Is. No, odds are it's still a one. <laughs> yeah, the odds are actually really heavily that it's always yeah. a one. Strong. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone, let's do this. So, movement phase, because we all concluded. Yep. Um, moves. Moves. Yeah. Trap. 
and then this stays exactly where it is. Okay, so one, Sam, this review. Oh, haha! You take, you take one wound. Uh, oh, well, okay. So you take Not one horrible. wound. It has a uh, one guy shows up. Has trap. I think I want to eliminate frenzy right now because I'm. I don't think I'm gonna use. Well, uh, I might want that later. Uh, yeah, I'll on take one on rage. Okay, <clears throat> so um, what's going to happen here now? We have. Uh, it looks like Bergen is going to be attacked with a uh, strength three from back here. All righty. We'll, uh, and, we'll do. Um, these two guys, I believe. Oh, no, she's healed. Uh, definitely. Oh, yep, wow. that's to me, too. Yep. Yep. Okay, so what, what happened? <laughs> what you, happened? you have four defense right now. Four? Why, oh, and why two four? Two plus one, and then plus loader. Yes. Ah, oh, because I have two damage. Thank you. Yep, yep I have four. You're 100% you right. So let's go ahead and do this one first. This is a four attack at range from these guys. Oh, God, please. Oh, oh Lord. What the heck? <laughs> so the, the tree counts as a, a defense here, right? Yeah, it does. A area. So you have to take two wounds. Two wounds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, guys. Well, I'm done. Well. Bye. No, you're not done. Uh, yeah, you're, you about, you're about two. halfway dead, right? You can take, what, six yeah. total? Hey, Say, six, hey, so healer, total, yeah. can you heal me next turn? Maybe. Maybe. That's a strong I, I would flip over. Yeah, you got that right. Yeah, that's exactly what I would have done. Okay, so that was from the little guys. Um, well, hey, <laughs> and now I have five defense. Uh, yes, you do. Um, so, Sam. But now you're... This is just a three attack. Yes, sir. When someone takes all the possible damage, are they knocked down? Are they... What's... Uh... Yeah, they're, they're just simply knocked down. They're not dead. Can we go pick them up again, or, or are they out of this round? N well, no, you can go heal them. Okay. Uh, which is actually the better, especially if a healer does it, because the healer will be able to roll two dice okay. and ignore those pieces. Um, dr like, for example, if Drain gets knocked down right here, he can take his next activation and stand right back up by healing one wound. Now, um, but it takes his activation. Now, don't spoil anything with this, but I'm, I'm just kind of curious. Are there some conditions where you, like, everyone needs to make it somewhere? Or if, like, if someone's yeah. knocked down, will you potentially need to go back and pick them back up? Generally speaking, as far as I know, and again, I, 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 I've only played this particular sure. scenario once, so I'm just as much in the dark as uh, everybody else, but um, uh, I don't think that we all have to reach the furthest expanse of this uh, map so far as we know it, um, but I, we have to have somebody get out there. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. I'm just asking, so though, I, not that Jan's going to get knocked out or anything. I was just, I was just curious for my own <laughs> sake. So, so on another, on the related note, specifically with if Jan got knocked down, um, so <laughs> if the leader is knocked down, does that token change? Ah, yes. Or it, excellent question. Okay. Why are we talking about hypotheticals that are never going to happen, yeah. everyone? Nope. So when wow. Jan gets knocked down and we leave him in the snow... I feel you can trust me to not lose at this game, is what you can you can do. Don't, don't now, worry, we'll items, prop you up. Items that are feet. on knockdown characters, can we pick them up while leaving the knockdown character there? <laughs> Over my cold, dead hand, Jesse. You will take my job. That's, that's, that's kind of my point. That's what we're specifying. I don't die. I'm just knocked down. Uh -huh. So I won't let you take it. Yep. Like, as, a, as I'm shivering from the cold and the sweats Good are pouring in, I'm not letting it go. That's kind of selfish, <laughs> if we're going to be honest. Sure, yeah. but it's my javelin. So, so question, ferocity. Speaking yes. of things that are actually happening and not hypotheticals, does right. he attack two times in a row? Or is it only yeah. when he's in groups? No, no, no. no attack uh, twice. Specifically, it, it attacks after he attacks. Okay, so I defended against his first attack. You did? Yes, Stop and I defended again. No, you you pressed F. You you just rotated I'm pressing him. R. No, those, those not were not rolled. There's no That's way R. it did that as R. Uh, 
There you go. Steve defended against both. Also, I'd like okay. to uh, I'd like to flash back about thirty seconds in the edit to where Sam finally realizes he never should have joined this stream, and they, they like lean forward and the hand to the head. <laughs> That's right. That's exact. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's mainly uh, because of me, isn't it? It's no, fine. it's fine. It, it, but. <laughs> I've just never seen Drang this useless. I mean, uh, <gasps> I mean oh, uh, how so dare I, you? Uh, guy pops out here. We have other attacks that need to be resolved, right? Oh, one uh, here. Okay, well, we have. Okay, so Drang just took two, which he yeah, should have. Before we before we recruit another guy here, right? Did, I just want to make sure we're done yeah. with turn. Did Did you take two attacks no. from this guy? Yes, from I, from the big brute. I did. At yeah. Least. So. He took that, so then uh, I have an attack from the guy in the trees, right? That's so right. I roll five a, dice. A, uh, yeah, and it's just a strength uh, three attack, so. Yep. So hopefully we're okay. There you oh, go. awesome. So I got so that. So I'm just going to let all of you know that Drang is going to come back at this heroically. It's going to be amazing. Hey, I'm just you watch. I'm going that. And then we have, uh, we have Lesseline here with her yeah. uh, attack. So she's got a uh, four defense, but she also has dodge. So the trees will help her uh, in this. So she's got four dice, and uh, she has to get three successes or more. Twice. Nice. Yeah. And oh, wow. That, so you take two, so I get two wounds. Uh, for one. So oh. I'll... You know what I'll do? I'm just going to take both of them on my, uh, my, uh, your dodge. Yeah, because we need the healer if we possibly can. It's like at this point. So what's the point of dodging let's... anymore? <laughs> just got to succeed at this point, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I have a plan for this round, you. guys. All right. So now the second attack, um, oh, and no. I only get. Oh, it's a second attack? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it also oh, has frenzy. Oh, right. Ferocity. That's what, that's what their ferocity does. They attack, and then they Our attack again. Yep. <clears throat> you got it. I do oh, not. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so she is out. Um, <laughs> she's down. And so what will happen here is that she will be flipped and put down. All right, but she's just knocked out. She's not dead. Okay. Here's the thing. I feel that Sam is you're going in his of, mind like, this should have been drink. You're kind of <laughs> in the path. To, you know, we're, we're headed that way anyway. So we'll just pick you up along the way. I mean, I'm honestly, the start is turn. I'm just going to roll in and I'm going to kill that dude. And uh, <laughs> you're going to come back up. Like, there's no other way it's happening. This but kind of. We have, we, we're, I'm down. So we do lose. Yes. Thank you. You just lost the morale for us. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, it also kind of screws screws over turn order too, because I was really hoping that he could assign Les Leslie to go first. <clears throat> that way, I could have Jan move out of there, so we could move towards the group. No, I need I you. I need you no, to heal gonna, me first. Yes. I, no, I was going to have you move, and then I would heal you. No, no, no. Okay, so, so this is my plan. In the right Let direction me direction in the process. Well, so Jan, before we get too, too excited with plans here, right? So we spawn the guy at B. We mm -hmm. lost a morale from that off our uh, our uh, fate. I'm sorry, I keep fate card. So um, we're on turn four now. Yes. Move that up. I've updated uh, everything else. Did we lose another morale for the fate card? Yes, yes, I, I did. I did. Yeah. So I, I saw that. Yep. So now we need to... Uh... Oh, so um, our leader needs to decide who's going to go first here. Okay, so everyone, this is my redemption song, my swan, my, my, re yes, not swan song, my redemption song right now. Okay, this is the plan. Please tell, let me know if it works. So, currently, what I'm planning on doing is that Bert, we will need to leave Sam temporarily here, <laughs> temporarily, so that Bergen, no, he, what are you doing? So Bergen can come over here, Why? search this. This is the objective. I know, <laughs> but we need to way. clear all the enemies. My plan. No, we listen, go listen. in the wrong direction. Listen, listen. We go, he no. go here, reveal this, so that then Ingwood can come here, no. heal me, I'm, I take it, this guy out, I move here, and I wipe all of them out in a single swing. 
and we no, clear don't. half the board of enemies immediately. Enemies well, don't matter. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with that idea. If you move into this spot right here, you will be ambushed by two different tokens. Oh, which... that also counts as an ambush. Yes. Oh no, but yes. What, if you move know, into if a I space... reveal them, huh? If I reveal them first, I don't get ambushed, right? Correct. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I, I meant. Bergen comes. She reveals them both with a search okay. action or whatever it is. Then Possibly. England would Possibly. heal me, and then I would go in and take everybody out. Okay. That's the that's my planet though. But if you guys want to do something different, that's totally Bergen cool. Bergen with her perception okay. of one. So okay, um, one thing. Let me just throw it out here. So I'm not going to move that way, but what I can do <laughs> is I can summon my bear. Right. Ah, yes. My bear has a range of two. Yep. So he can go there. He has a better perception roll than I do, since there is no perception on this space. It's just a base of one. Right, but to turn so, both of them over, you have to get at least two. Oh, okay. to uh, turn them over, you have to get at least two. Okay. Turn, turn both of them over. If you just oh. get one success, you'll be able to turn one of them over. But if you get oh, two, okay. you'll be able to turn both of them over. So okay. I can I can try to do that, um, That's and a then idea. I will shoot mm -hmm. this guy over here, the mm -hmm. brute, so that Lesseline can like revive herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I don't plan on moving backwards, though. No, 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 that's fine. I forgot that you can use your familiar. So now we have to reveal the fate token. Oh, the God, card. please fate don't card. let it be a single action this you round. You must pull yourselves together. The weakest link. This is a perfect event. Those who are Shut hiding up, and harassing you sense the fear that is creeping into the hearts of the less seasoned among you. Yeah. And they are ready to explore <gasps> this failing. Showing the slightest weakness could cost you dearly. The player controlling the hero with the lower will and the lowest rank performs a test. Not me, because I have the highest uh, rank. I have two will. Um, I, will? I don't think can I count. We, because can we just I'm... thematically rule that it is in fact Jan? No. Uh, actually, I think it's me, right? Because if we're tied in will... Which I think we are. Then yeah. it goes to str the standing, the lowest rank. Yeah. Which I or uh, and I am the lower standing. Which is fine. I don't care if everyone wants to come after me. That's fine. What? Oh, so you need to make a a, a will test? Yeah, yeah you just it's gotta, a will test. It's just yeah. a it's just a test of one though, right? Yeah, test of one, and I roll two die. Can you have to get one success? Oh. <laughs> not a chance. Uh, in fine. case of failure, this hero that becomes the prey of all threats until the end of the turn. Heroes are going to have two actions. Hostiles are going to spawn on A, and we're going to lose another morale at the end of this day. It actually might be better because stuff's going to move to positions Good. where they can't even attack me. Sure. So it might be okay, honestly. So, all right. Well, I, I don't well, mind that failure. Bergen, take us away. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So uh, first action here, I will spend a food. And I will deploy my familiar in the in the icy, uh, you know, planes there. Mm -hmm. um, and I am going to search its area. And I will roll two dice. Hopefully the dice are a little bit nicer this time. I believe in you so much. Oh, oh my beautiful. god! And I revealed both oh. of them. Okay. So. This one and this one. Oh hey. my gosh, that's glorious! Only, only okay. two guys. So up. we have two guys here. Okay. Oh. Oh, you already what? brought him. Cool. Yep. I I drug him in. Okay. So we have two guys, and now my bear can make an attack yeah. against one of them, and I yeah. reduce the hostile's defense by one. So I'll roll those two dice again. And we will uh, see here. Oh, the bear missed. The oh, bear did no. nothing. But that's fine. You know what? Oh. It did its job of revealing. Defense by one. I, yeah, I would imagine it doesn't go below below one to a minimum. Yeah, point. so I I'd assume that it's still like you, you still, still have, have to get a hit. Yeah. Right. So okay, then uh, Bergen will shoot at the mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the slugger there. Um, who has a defense of three. 
and I get five dice for that. What so, happened with all those mighty rolls at the beginning of the game, Cadius? Well, you used them all I'm up. I'm getting what mighty rolls when it matters. <laughs> oh, Not then, oh. that's for sure. Okay. Um, that guy didn't die. So. <gasps> what is uh, going on? Uh, you know what? I don't know. That's okay. Oh, I'm just going to move into melee, but that's fine. And uh, <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. <clears throat> Wait, do we want to? Oh, wait, Cadius, do you want to use one of the tokens for a plus one for an additional die, or can we only do that before you declare the attack or before, before performing the attack? It's a cooperative game. Let's go ahead and let him do it. <laughs> yeah, I think you should use one of the tokens. Oh, to okay. Roll, roll, well, roll, roll an additional die. Okay, I uh, I need a hit. On I this believe one in you, Cadius. I've always oh no, no. <laughs> that one die got nothing. <laughs> I, that's okay. I'm not Worth concerned about the slugger. We'll be all right. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. So, okay, so question. How does movement through these guys, like if they're revealed, do you have to fight them before you can move past them? Or how does that work? Yeah, you, 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 they, you, can't, you can't move through them. Um, okay. So they'll, they'll impede your movement. Okay, got it. <laughs> Geek, why are you asking that question? You're, you are planning on coming to my space and healing, right? Right? You need to move to this token here, not oh, backwards. Oh, God. You've you, we need to collaborate. One Please. Face. I guess I'll come over here and heal you. Yay. I will be moving in that direction, though, like after this and, run. Like, I end my turn me. here. Oh, but you're, you'll be me. safe. Wait, are you going to leave you feel him one. with the big guy? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm taking out the guy. That's exactly what the, I'm doing now. The big one? I'm I'm taking that okay. guy out and these two guys out. Okay. I'm taking everyone everybody out. Great. Okay, so now Leslie. Um yes. Okay, so you guys want me to stand up because uh, it's possible. it won't attack you, right? Cuz I'm the oh, prey of everybody now. It won't, it won't if I'm down. Um but if I stand back up, it will attack me over Bergen. Because it's only the oh, level okay. 1 Cadius um, that it, that you're targeted. Now, what I could do, though, is I could stand up and heal on the dodge one, which will help me be a little bit better at, at uh, defending next time. I could do that, but it's it's really up to you guys. Actually, I think him staying down for this round yeah, is fine, that way we be... don't risk losing another morale. Yeah, that might be well, good. Yeah, okay. That's fine with me. So what happens if we run out of morale? Is it just a resource that gets spent and we are limited by actions in the future? No, or is that a... We read 299. We have to read 299, correct. That um, means we failed to survive that, that chapter I was really interested in? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I hope that I can redeem myself in all of your eyes this round. Okay. So first thing I'm doing, I am doing a valiant, uh, uh, um, a valiance attack of six dice. Unfortunately, because Geek is here with me, I will not be able to perform another one. Um, so I have six dice against a defense of three. 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 And that Got is it. a hit. Very everyone. nice. So he is out. See, Geek, I am protecting you. Mm -hmm. So here's what I was planning on doing. Um, oh, we could definitely do that. Hmm. Okay, so here's here's what I was planning on doing. I want to go ahead and do a move action, mm -hmm. right? So that I can go here. Yeah. And so what I want to do now is that I'm going to activate my once per activation. This hero may perform a melee attack as a, as a, um, you know, as a, as an attack or whatever. He suffers one wound after this attack and I'll go ahead and activate that on rage, right? Yeah, so that well, we don't waste. After, mm -hmm. It's after the attack, yes. Yeah. So so that we don't waste the two morale because I was planning on doing whirlwind over here. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, but idea. what? We're running low on morale. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so what I'm so remember that I also have the spear, and I'm also by myself. There mm -hmm. you go. Completely yeah, dead. One, Both of those are gone. They're all toast. Yes. Very nice. And, Very nice. And see the berserker. Berserks. Yeah, behind the scenes. It's good. <laughs> behind the scenes, indeed. Okay. So. I will make. You'll have a need for prayer yet. 
I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a, a message from Sam after this, just being like, "Hey, next time, can Jan be the cameraman and you?" Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I am doing him? great as Drang. I don't know what you're all saying. I'm doing good. I have damage. I've taken out more enemies. I'm good. Yeah. Um... <laughs> okay, so that's everybody's actions, right? So we move yes. on to the hostile right. phase. Now what will happen here is that uh, this guy will move here because he's coming after Bergen. Mm -hmm. uh, this yep. guy and will move Can here. we make this guy move here, Sam? Because it's the same distance. Is it equidistant? Actually, it, no, it this is equidistant is closer. to me, yes, but it would mean it wouldn't attack. Uh, mm hmm. Understood. There. I'm good with that. Yep. And so I'm then uh, I think I'm the only one who gets attacked here. So. Oh, and this guy moves too. Oh, yep, so, that guy moves right in front of me. So, so you're going to have two strength uh, three attacks that you'll need yep. to defend against. Yep. So let's see. I get five dice for rolling defense. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just do the uh, the three strength first here. Okay. It's like a taste sure. of how terribly it's going to go in the future. You're going to do great. Ooh, there you go. Right. So one of these guys didn't do anything. Awesome. Please do not use up all your luck right now. There you go. There's Good. another. All right. And now, now we have the frenzy guy, and he's also three, but it's twice now. Yep. <laughs> and there goes using that, the luck. That's so fine. Two damage. That's fine, because I have no damage at the moment anyway. Yeah. All right. So... Generically, that'll be, uh, I think that'll be fine. Okay. All right. And I get attacked again by him. Yeah. With his, um, it's not frenzy. It's a uh, ferocity. There we go. Keep saying the wrong keyword. There right, we go. I defend against <laughs> that. Okay. I will call that a win. Yeah. Out of four attacks, yeah. taking two damage. That's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. I'm telling awesome. you, man, Bergen's a beast. She's great. Yeah. So then we spawn a character at A. Yes, and we lose a morale, so we go from five to four. Oh boy! Who we are? We are on the knife's edge here. And then, because we were too slow, because Jan was praying. Oh my <laughs> god! All right, so uh, we have we to read D. D. What number is D? What number do we have? It is two two ninety nine. That's not good. Two. I feel like the farther we get in this book, the more scared I, don't know. I am. No, 299 99. is the same as the failure on the uh, so card. Are we reading so. this? It's 99, guys. Oh, it's 99. 99. 99. Yeah, oh, it's 99. 99. Okay. Wasn't it letter D? Yes. yes. Letter D is 299. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah, I thought it was G. My bad. It, it uh, Geek is right. Uh, uh, well, this this will be fun. Which is the same as the morale. Yeah. Your assailant shrill right. cries roar around you like the waters of a treacherous, a treacherous whirlpool. There is a whistling sound as a spear, decorated with toothless skulls, cuts through the mist and pierces the shoulder of one of your companions. From the abyss, the sound of sneering and grunting gets louder and louder. You lie helpless and bleeding, listening to the sharp thud of their withered hands on the, taint, on the tan skid, skins of their war drums. It is too late now. The top of the hill is too far away, and you are besieged on all sides. Your eyelids close and you let darkness gently take the place of the evil light. In this half-sleep, where you feel your body rolling and crashing on the rocky ground, your mind is overcome with horror. A woman with her eyes gouged out, a white crow, f crow flying upside down, a wave crashing over you. The cold foam runs down your face. Before you completely awaken from the tumultuous sleep, whispered murmurs sound in your ears. Ikaja, bolavan, efalaka, loop. Curse eternity. Jan, you fail. Oh gosh, darn. <laughs> it's not because of me. What do you mean? It was one turn. This is what it happens when the Berserker turn. prays. Okay, so we have yep. to so that, read O2. That was triggered because we got up here to our time, right? Oh yep. no. Zero, zero, yeah, so that was the thing. Okay. O2 is red, and let me go ahead and read this one. It says, after the storms we've endured, the morale of the crew is at its lowest point. We are woken by a sharp creaking of the mast. Painfully, we get, our, we get to our feet and look overboard. 
Uh, and then we come up closer. The shape that emerges from the horizon escapes no one. Is it a hallucination? This massive spiny neck surmounted by a dragon's head, the prow of our King Hakon's Drakkar, um, hoisted on top of a wooden tower, seems to challenge us once again, but we're not giving up hope. One of us puts his horn to his lips to announce our arrival, but he changes his mind, hesitating, as if he knows, as if he, too, had dreamt that sinister premonition. Soon, we must deal with a small rocky shoreline which looks familiar. A path stretches out in front of us, tracing irregular curves along a silent coastline. It is shrouded in a mist that dogs our every step. We must be very wary if we are to reach the tower at the top of this wave-lashed hillside. There are many who are injured, so we choose those who are best able to climb the path to get help from our brothers. So we repeat the setup as indicated in the previous paragraph, but we, have, but we have the following exceptions. We do not place threat tokens on totem areas, and we shift each of the saga tokens placed on the turn track by one square to the right, and then we also don't read the introduction. So the, the, the scenario will shift and meld a little bit uh, to, in this case, make it, a little bit easier I so really, that hopefully you'll I really you'll, like how that yeah. circles like I like thematically I really love that what we just did still exists but it's in a different context like the application of that just to someone who is a, a like this isn't wiped now this whole scene is still echoing in my memory and we're approaching this with like kind of a, a, a more information or a new like that's cool yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of it, it's kind of like we just had a dream yeah. about what could happen in the worst scenario, but now we wake up yep. and we're going to blow the horns to announce our arrival. But that dream sticks in our minds and like maybe I shouldn't do that. And we tell and, uh, uh, we tell Dreng he is staying in the ship. We're going to take some new people out. <laughs> all, all I know, all I know is that I'm praying turn one. <laughs> all I know is that you're never praying. Dude, the so, only reason why that happened is because I couldn't pray on the first turn. That was so I could have just said, hey, I don't need that one random success like on a roll in a specific yeah. scenario and moved on. So yeah. and, and odds odds are here, we'll probably, if we do timestamps, which I'm terrible at doing them, but we should for this video, we will probably have a timestamp that jumps to this location uh, where we are talking about our final thoughts, right? This is the first time all four of us have been able to experience this. Sam, you, uh, you're a little biased, and that you've played this way more than us. Um, yeah. But I'd love to, I'd love to, you know, now start talking a little bit about what the uh, the first impressions are like. Like I, I'm, I didn't even get to play because I was zooming around. I'm really, really interested. Uh, this mm -hmm. is cool. Everything thematically, storytelling, the way it's written, the gameplay, like everything lines up with my type of game. Mm. Yeah, and you oh, know what? It, it, there were some things in there that reminded me of our playthrough of Reichbusters. Like, uh, for example, you remember that the pat patrols in Reichbusters, where you would have those tokens that are face down, and they would suddenly come come towards you, and it would reveal something that you weren't expecting. I like the drama and the mystery that that provides, especially in this context where you have like these wooden areas. You're reaching a you know, a foreign land that you haven't been to before, and there's all these threats and, and malice that surrounds it. And it's you slowly exploring this landscape that starts slowly revealing each of these different elements, right? I, I think that applies so well here. Um, and I like the evolution of that mechanic, especially here that kind of like everything is solidified. And what you're seeing is more groups of like this unit or that unit or or or, or different types of units all kind of like coalescing into one i, I really enjoyed that as well cool yeah the more yeah. i've learned about this game the the fact that it actually combines uh, like you like it answered all my questions of how does how does the failure mechanic work now i've discovered that um how does the scenario setup work with picking your heroes? Like that's that was the only things that I didn't know because I had already read the rule book. That was like one of the first things I did when I first heard about Hell. Um, I backed like right away because knowing you were involved, Sam, and like just bringing that American, the American ideals to like Mythic does amazing games, but yeah. translating that's it to translation us process. Americans, yeah. Um, ha having an, ha having a native speaker just read it and stuff and like does it make sense because not even just about translation it's does it make sense to our mm -hmm. american ideals um sure. 
I was very, very excited to, to get involved. And uh, I also like kind of in the back of my head, I'm like, I can always back out if I have to. But the more I learn about them, like I'm really excited for this game. And now they've played, I'm even more excited. That's really, really neat. That's great. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's someone... our group as a whole has, has kind of echoed that you being on board um, is is what makes us like, I mean, we you guys make incredible games, but we love the fact that we can tie you know, this this is going to be one of the products that's coming out with like your signature right there, and we know that you've been, your eyes have been on it, your hands have been on it, and we love that. So, you know, I I do want to I appreciate what you're saying definitely, but I want to I want to make sure it's clear this has been in in the works for for two years now. There's been a lot of work that's been done on this before I even uh, was a, a you know a, a glimmer in their eye or anything like that because. Uh, I, the designers have done such a great job. The artists have done such a tremendous job uh, pulling out the the theme and the setting and the feeling uh, that's there uh, with all of the artwork that they've done. The sculptors have done a tremendous job on the on all of the different models that they're that are being produced. So uh, there's so much here. Um, really, anything that I'm doing to it is just. Um, you know, I'm, I kind of fanboyed with it a little bit as well. Cause I was like, you know, mythics always been one of my favorite companies as far as games are concerned. Mm -hmm. Now they're making a Viking themed game, which is like one of my favorite themes and games. And so, uh, it was just really cool that way. But, um, I, I am, I cannot take any credit here. There's so much yeah. work has been done. I think, uh, I think the thing for me is you're doing what you're doing now you're like we know who you are right we can identify with you and you're sitting down and playing this with people here in the states and like we get a chance yeah. to see it and experience it and so um yeah. it's more it's more having a face that we know like and i love that sure. mm -hmm. so got it's it not not yeah, that this cool. hasn't been developed i mean you guys make incredible games across oh, yeah. the board there's no debate there um it's yeah. it's just a matter of you're sitting down and playing it with us and that that makes a difference so well, that's cool Cadis, yeah. And so your, Cadis had something that he wanted to say. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, as someone who hasn't backed it, you know, looked at it, I, I have Tainted Grail coming, you know, thinking about how much time do I realistically have to play these campaign games? You know, like they just, I have Gloomhaven and it sits on my shelf. Um, <laughs> and playing it and, and experiencing that, it was awesome. I really enjoyed the fact that you could tell how many different ways the game could end, you know, whether that was us running out of morale. And I imagine something horrible happening, you know, as everyone just gets sad, you know, or just us taking too long. I enjoyed the, you know, you play Gloomhaven and you, you have the setup and it's like, Oh, this new room will have different things in it, but you didn't expect, or I didn't expect a whole new portion of the map to like suddenly appear there, yeah. you know, just, that was not my expectation or the fact that, you know, we got a spear item that you could kill the scarecrow with. If you didn't have a ranged mm. person in position to do that, you know, the game kind of gave you the option or the tools to do more than just what was uh, initially offered. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was simple enough that it wasn't, you weren't constantly looking at the rules. You weren't constantly trying to figure out what was happening. And I really appreciated that. Yeah, no, that's, that's one of my um, that's one of my favorite things about it is that the the mechanics are there, the mechanisms are solid, um, they're streamlined, so they're not always up in your face. They're allowing you to play the game, but at the same time, your focus remains on the story that's being told, not the mechanisms that you're having to uh, kind of trundle through uh, as you're figuring out what the storyline is it, it really kind of allows the the story the backdrop the setting the theme to always be in the front and those mechanisms are just kind of running in the background that's kind of how well, i've been uh yeah that's that's the big thing say. for me it's the theme is the theme is awesome and everything you're doing is allowing you to kind of visualize and, and tell that narrative story and every little card you're flipping has narrative tied to it i love that you're discovering more about the world and the you know the adventure you're on right you're kind of opening up this door every step as you're progressing throughout the course of the game but then there was always mm -hmm. some reasonable and, and kind of crunchy decisions now um i'm curious if the group has any uh any kind of open-ended questions remaining questions or concerns from this first experience i i have one thing that i'd love to to find out more about um throughout sure. the campaign 
how do your characters kind of build and develop? Um, if you're if you're playing, because I know it's a settlement, right? There's another stage to this that we're not actually experiencing. Correct. Uh, there is a camp scenario. This is there are two kinds of scenarios in the game. The one that we played is the expedition style scenario, uh, which is more of kind of like a dungeon crawl ish type of uh, scenario. But then we also have the camp scenario, which would be the one we would be moving on to if uh, Dream hadn't taken so much time. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Um, <laughs> no uh we would be we would eventually move on to the camp scenario which has a little bit more resource management we have to uh collect wood collect some more food so that we can utilize our familiars take extra actions uh there is a campfire that we have to keep going in that camp scenario uh later on down the path in the campaign we're also going to be trying to add uh, as we build the settlement back up we're going to be adding buildings and structures that will allow us uh, additional kinds of actions and activations uh, later on in the campaign. So that's what the camp scenario holds for it. Um, as far as how do our characters uh, evolve, um, if you look on the campaign, we've unlocked uh, dual layer uh, player boards, which uh, oh, actually yeah. helps us in the replayability of it because kind of like a legacy style game, which this is not a legacy game. Let me make sure that's clear. Um, but one of the things that makes it kind of feel like a legacy style game is that your characters are going to be changing and growing and evolving over the course of the campaign. And initially we had thought that we were gonna be using removable stickers for that, where we would actually sticker over your, your, uh, your abilities as they grow and flourish, they get better. Maybe they'll change. But now what we have with those dual layer uh, player boards is that we have tokens that will just fit inside those little recesses. And we won't have to use stickers anymore. Uh, we still have some stickers that we're going to be using, but they're going to be for the rule book. And uh, there's not going to be any damage. We're actually, um, we're actually adding some empty pages in the back of the rule book where those uh, rule change stickers will be added so that you can go back and replay the game again and you won't have to remove any stickers from the, uh, um, from the um, rule book as you go back and replay it. So the, the changes that are made, some of the different things are, you, we had some of those experience cards, player cards that were available to us now. That's another way that your character will change. He'll, uh, he or she will get more of those experience cards that will okay. be at their disposal. Um, your characteristics, your special abilities will change. I think some of your stats are also going to be able to change as well. I'm not sure. Your rank in society, uh, Viking society, will change. Um, so there's a number of different ways that your character will evolve and change. Will players, um, but it's all based on that are made. Will players be primarily pushing through the game focused on like a single character or two? Or are you, are you really going to be utilizing the full arsenal that you have? Well, like this scenario, um, all of the characters are available, but only three could be chosen. Hmm. Uh, so Bergen was a mandatory one that we had to use, but then we could choose which characters we played yep. after that. Other scenarios will, for example, like the camp scenario that would be next, um, we eight characters are used. And so between the four of us, we would choose two characters each and all of those characters are used. Um, the campaign is very episodic in that way. Think of a TV show that has a, a core of characters, of um, you know main actors, but they're not always, uh, every character is not utilized in every episode. No. Uh, so in episode one, you might have the four characters that are here, but in episode two, uh, you'll have uh, two of those, but then you'll have some others that show up and, and those are used in, in uh, the next scenario. That's kind of the idea with the scenarios, and each scenario will tell you which characters are used. So before I open it up to everyone else, I have one more one more question. From your from your perspective, where where's like the sweet spot when it comes to um, player count? Because I can see what we just did here wasn't so complicated that I don't feel like I could run it solo and have a rewarding experience. Um, but I, yeah. I had a great time running it with, with all of us. What have you found to be kind of your favorite spot, personally? 
honestly, uh, I think there are uh, when you have, especially with the camp scenario, when you yeah. have uh, four players uh, and you're each controlling two uh, characters, it it can run long. You don't really notice it because there's not a whole lot of downtime. You're paying attention to everybody. You're doing one of your characters, and then it's somebody else, and then you have to do your another your uh, another character after that. Um, with three players, you're controlling more characters. Um, so it doesn't go, it, it actually goes a little bit quicker because there's not a whole lot of external dialogue that's going on. It's just internal dialogue. I'm going to do this with this person. I'm going to do this with that person. And that all happens a lot faster than if, uh, it's multiple players talking about what they're doing out loud. Is the camp um, with, with two or one players? No, I don't think okay. so. Um, I've, I've played the camp scenario with just two. Yeah. Uh, when I was playing with the uh, Beast of War, we, um, uh, me and Jerry were, were playing, and we each had four characters, and it was a blast. Okay. Uh, but I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed controlling multiple characters like that, and so did Jerry. So uh, we, we had a great time. Uh, each controlling four characters, and it went it went pretty fast. It went pretty uh, at, at a pretty good clip, um, but because uh, I think again a lot of that internal dialogue was going on, and we were just voicing it as we did our actions. We didn't have to kind of get approval uh, from everybody else before we did well, what we wanted. To do. And most of these style games, I typically run just personally in my gaming groups is typically solo or solo with one or or two players. Um, and, and so eight characters eight characters seems like a lot to run. That's something unique in this game. Um, but it sounds it yeah. sounds like and I'll have to dig into the other other style of scenario. It sounds like it, it runs yeah. it still runs smoothly because there's not as much overhead as some of the other like big box games that I've I've dealt with. Yeah. So Well the the, the solo mode is going to be something different and the designer David Ricotto is going to be uh, writing an article about that this weekend. Oh, cool. So keep your eyes open. Uh, because the solo mode is not going to be just going through the multiplayer campaign by yourself. Uh, it's going to be a completely different mode that actually focuses more on the survival aspect of the game rather than anything else. Those other things will still be there, but it'll focus more on the survival aspect of it. And uh, it will be something that's designed on its own. It's not something that will just be kind of like a tack on okay. uh, to the multiplayer mode. It's going to be, uh, it's going to have a life of its own. It's going to have its own. Uh, paragraphs in the songbook that are only read while you're playing through the solo mode of it um, th that are not read during the multiplayer mode. Uh, so it's, again, it, it's it's still, um, uh, you know, all that writing is still a work in progress, but there's a definite decision made that solo mode is not going to be just this, you know, throwaway tech on. Uh, it's definitely going to be uh, deliberate. Now, there's no reason I couldn't do the multiplayer co-op on my own as well, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. That, cool. No, that, yeah, that that, that kind of goes without saying. You can always just yeah. play multiplayer by yourself. That's what uh, I was there's no that's what I do. All my big box games, I just do that anyway. <laughs> like, like, you know, I don't have enough friends. They all, uh, they're all online. <laughs> all right. Anyone yeah, else? I've no, asked, I... I've asked the things I was kind of, uh, I was curious about or, or concerned about. Anyone else have, have any questions? Well, Jesse, um, so their, their, their latest update where they revealed the Viking chests and stuff, mm -hmm. one of the things that you're supposed to do whenever you're playing with the physical copy is you're supposed to put a marker just on your character to indicate that he took an action. So that way, as like when you get eight characters out, it's easy to tell that, okay, that character's taken action. I, okay. I take an action. Well, cool. part of the Viking chest is um, now you have amazing looking markers instead of just little cubes to put like on it. your thing. And so it's a dual purpose. So I'm like, that's a pretty good add-on. I like that it's a game in and of itself, but at the same time, yeah. it enhances this yeah. game as well. Yeah, you can use those little uh, uh, those little pawns or those little meeples uh, in the game, but you can also in, in the chess game, but you can also mm -hmm. use them uh, in uh, the actual game as well. That's yeah. what you all were talking about when we first got on. Yes, I'll have yeah. to go. I'll have to go look at pictures. I've, I haven't checked out that update. Yeah, it, it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's cool. So maybe uh, I can jump in here real yeah. quick with a, with a question. So. Um, in each song, you have a deck of fake cards, right? Or you have, or is that a universal? No, the fake cards. There's actually two decks. There's fake cards for expedition scenarios. And there's also fake cards for camp scenarios. And so, there's two decks. do you find that when you play those, that you can 
that it's small enough you can kind of predict what's going to happen? Are there enough of them that there's a lot of variability to that? I was I was just uh, I was playing from a with, this morning with a group from uh, Italy, and uh, we were playing the camp scenario, which is the one that I played the most because that's the one that we d we decided that we were going to show to the content creators uh, because it shows off more of the game's aspects than just the okay. expedition scenario did. So um, and just this morning, I saw an event card that I'd never seen before. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, and that's after having played it um, double digit times. So I, I don't think you can predict it. Um, but again, uh, who knows? May, maybe if you play it enough, you will. But I don't know. We'll see. I mean, at that point, yeah, but that's the type of thing so that, that you could. Yeah. And, and it's the type of thing that you guys could probably like uh, during development, if, if you see the need, you could potentially have like, oh, uh, after after song four, you will add this amount of uh, this amount of uh, fake cards into sure. into the base deck and then yeah. slowly build it out. So I have two follow up questions. First okay. question. Sam's um, oh, actually. Guys. Before no, before before the question, I, I do want to say that I love the prey action. It's the best action in the game. Yeah. Prey action <laughs> wins over everything. I heard, Jen. But I, I do have a reason. I'll accept your apology on behalf of the audience. I do have a reason why I'm saying that. So a lot in, in, in a lot of these miniature games, especially those that are heavily thematic, obviously dice are a big component. However, yeah. dice mitigation sometimes is not really there. Yeah. What I liked about the prey action is that it gave me the ability to just like, oh, I know I'm not good at rolling dice, so let me make sure that I have better odds. Right. Um, so with that camp action and all those different, you know, things that are going to get added, what 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 should we expect? Is it more like dice mitigation? Is it just newer actions that give us more control over over what we're rolling or what we're doing? More guaranteed hits or something like that? Well, one of the things that I want I want to say first off, as far as dice mitigation is concerned, is that uh, we didn't have uh, them in this scenario, but there are other characters who have a, a support ability. Uh, what that does is it's when they are present with somebody else in the same area, uh, when they are nearby in the same hex, uh, they give the ability to the person who's making the test uh, the chance to reroll one of their dice. Uh, and that is a special ability that a uh, number of the different characters have. I know Frody has it. I know that uh, Queen Petronia has it. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, Geralt has it as well. So that's four um, out of the playable 13 at the beginning that I know for sure has that support action. So again, it has a lot to do. You can get more dice mitigation out of the, the, the clan by simply being mindful of where you're placing your characters throughout the course of the scenario. Um, so that builds also into tactics and, and strategy and so forth and so on. Uh, as far as the different buildings that are coming out, um, honestly, I don't know exactly what they're going to be providing because we are trying to keep everything as mysterious as possible we don't want to spoil too much but uh for example one of the buildings that are coming in is uh a forge and one of our characters is a blacksmith so possibly he'll be able to create weapons or something to that effect maybe craftsmanship will, will come into the campaign at some point down the road um there are there's a uh, one is called a refuge, which which is kind of like a uh, uh, a, a med tent. Um, so maybe that will have some type of uh, further play into it later on. I don't know if it's going to be down the dice mitigation aspect of it, but um, uh, who knows? I, I mean, uh, the designers do, but uh, they're 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 staying a little tight lipped about it. For the specific purpose of wanting to keep that um, that m mystery alive for everybody, including us, that um, are are going to enjoy playing this when we get it all put together as well. Very cool, uh, Jesse. Am I allowed to make more questions, or are we out of time? No, you can you can ask another question. 
Yeah. Okay. I'm Just sorry. No, Sam, that's, you're you're good to Sam, keep to keep so asking questions. Thank you so much for uh, for spending the time and. <laughs> No, but Sam, are you still okay with like I could keep going all day, man? Uh, but I'm good. you sure? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, starting okay. starting fresh. <laughs> um, so Sam, another another question I have, which I just find really interesting, this whole concept of it reminds me a little bit about Kingdom Death, right? You you have the hunt phase, which is something completely unique, much more action oriented. And then you have the camp phase, uh, or sorry, the, the settlement phase within Kingdom Death. Um, and they play out completely differently to a certain point. So if, if you could distill the mechanical differences between each of those, um, what would you boil it down to? Um, well, first of all, I've not played Kingdom Death Monster. Um, I've never played it. I've only read about it and I've only seen what other people have said about it. So I, I can't really talk, um, intellectually about about kingdom death monster as far as the two scenarios that we have available to us um the expeditions as i said earlier will focus much more on a dungeon crawlish type of feel where you are searching for something in particular you're searching for a pathway like in this one we were trying to find a way to get to that tower uh, upon which the prow of our, our king's ship was affixed. Um, but the camp scenarios are going to have a bit of a different feel to them because we are it, it's a centralized location. We're not going to be exploring at all. We're trying to build up our settlement. We have to find wood. We have to find food. We've got to keep that fire going because it's cold outside. Um, as the campaign as the campaign grows on, that camp scenario will be we need to build up our defenses. Uh, but at the same time, all of that's happening. Uh, threats are attacking us, and so we okay. have to hold those off at bay. But we have to also build up our settlement as well. So that's pretty much what those two kinds of scenarios are are broken down to. Mm -hmm. You have exploration, almost what I can loosely and very carefully affix maybe a tower defense yep, type of that's feeling. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yep. In the yeah. Camp scenario. Um, but I don't I don't want to distill it down that far yeah, because sure. I don't think it's exactly that. It just gives you an idea. To survival mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and sort of hold off uh, hold off the threat sort of thing. So not not quite tower defense. Which is cool. That element. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like it. So instead of instead of like progressing through a narrative i mean at your settlement you're locked into this place and this is where you're you're solving the puzzle in that specific location this has been right. this has been great i'm i'm super excited <laughs> genuinely right. um this was this was fantastic that you took the time to sit down and play with us um and, and oh, show it point. off a little bit um i am i am uh, thrilled that we got a chance to see it so i was really yeah. um, i was genuinely really disappointed because i'd reached out uh uh, and asked to see if there was any prototypes floating around. Uh, and yeah. correct me if I if I say that Helena, I have I've never yes. said her name. So she uh, she said she she followed back up uh, fairly quickly and, and was like, we actually due to the chaos in the world, we're not able to get physical prototypes into the hands of people here, kind of in the states and everything. And so um, and so I. Uh, I was I was excited that there was going to be you know availability for a TTS mod and a run and, and that you would take the time to sit down and play with us. So this has been this has been yeah. great. Um, I don't know what else to say. Well, we we appreciate the coverage. I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> as I was uh, I was telling one of my uh, coworkers uh, the other day, we're living the dream. You know, it's uh, we're lot we're working long hours, especially during the campaign, but it's worth it. You know, we're having a great time. We're showing a product that we're that we're passionate about. And uh, to a bunch of people that that are also passionate about it as well, so it's it's just it's a, it's a lot of fun. So when you guys thank us for it, it's like, yeah, man, we're we're enjoying ourselves. You know, there's nothing there's nothing really to thank us about. We're we're happy to do this kind of thing, but we appreciate it as well. So when's the when's the target delivery on? <laughs> yeah, Have okay. Shipped yet? <laughs> it, it, <laughs> It's, uh, it's scheduled right now as June 2021. Um, cool. And, uh, and like all course, Kickstarters, I don't need you to say it. Uh, like all Kickstarters, if you're going to back Kickstarters, it'll take longer than they anticipate. We we are going to do as 
the best that we possibly can do. Nope. I expect uh, you to be late, that. please. I you don't even have to say it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it across the board with every Kickstarter I back. Uh, that is that sure. is my standard approach. I'm waiting seven years for Kingdom Death content. I'll wait a, an extra few months. <laughs> for that's not even actually stuff. a joke. Uh, that's true. Wow. That's not, that's that's not, not a joke. joke. And that's, I still, wow. that's like legit. I still love Kingdom Death. So. <laughs> yep. So, seven years from now too yeah seven years from now as well <laughs> let's hope uh so that that being said sam thank you so much for taking the time um thank you uh the rabble from my uh from my discord community here um and all of those that have watched to this point i mean I, if you haven't subbed like you made a mistake way earlier than now and uh, remember to pray often everybody yeah, finally i just want to point out remember sam how i said at the very beginning of the video uh, you clearly haven't watched Quackalope gameplays before. <laughs> yes, yes. We are, uh, we are, we we are now not officially 0 for 8 against our arch nemesis, <laughs> nemesis, Green Mouse. Green Mouse was introduced when we played a game of Mousetrap with an AI character yeah. and both and lost law. to a single character. Yep, that was <laughs> great times. So we're, mm -hmm. we're 0 and 8. So uh, our win-loss conditions are standing strong. Well, um, me and Katie, we, we tried so hard to break that record, we, break that streak. We did, but Jan prayed, and uh, well, Jan prayed. unfortunately, that's how it worked. Tradition is kept, so it's it's fine. <laughs> it, you can always rely on tradition. So, I right, want to say one thing: when when Man vs. Meeple wins on Sunday, we yeah. can point. We can look back to when Drang goes to pray. And <laughs> <laughs> well, this is actually. This is actually an exclusive. Uh, we're going to be playing the camp scenario with uh, oh, members. Okay. So uh, nice. this is the uh, this is the only. I mean, I did I did a solo kind of just half of a thing on on Facebook a couple days ago, but um, this is the uh, full. This is the only one that has been done by an American content creator uh, in the expedition. So there is that. We're the cool. only ones that get to fail. You hear us? Us. <laughs> oh, right. yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go start editing this. All right. Very cool. Thanks, Sam. Thank Thanks, you. Sam. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, Sam. So if you made it to the end of this video, I, like I said, would love to hear your thoughts. Is this worth watching? Did you actually make it here to this point? Did you skip around? Is Tabletop Simulator something that you're uh, interested in seeing on the channel, or would you rather this kind of be a one-off? Both of those answers are perfectly fine. I, honestly, when we filmed this, I had no intention of bringing it to the main channel. It was a test run, and I let Mythic Games know that there was a chance it would go on our secondary channel, on Quackalope Adjacent, where we host uh, stuff for our Patreon and Discord community. Um, but I liked how it turned out. I thought it was a fun gameplay. I thought it was worthwhile sharing with the audience as a whole. And we put the time in necessary to make it as produced as possible so that it was enjoyable as possible for you all to watch. I hope we did a good job. If you made it here, I, I'm going to assume that's the case. Uh, whatever the case, let me know that you made it to the end of the video by leaving a honk in your comment. Just type the word honk out instead of quack. That's what we normally use. Um, and let me know your thoughts. If there's improvements you'd like to be see made, if uh, if you prefer that this stays um, sort of a 1 in 50 type of video, or I think we're almost to 200 videos on the page right now, so a 1 in 200, or if this is something that you'd like to see more often as long as we can continue improving upon the style and the quality uh, of the production. That's sort of always our standard, right? Nothing, nothing will go up if I don't feel like we're making steps in the right direction. Whatever the case. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. If you've made it to this point, I, I'm pretty confident you're already doing that. Uh, but whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.